viewers at home. What? Oh, that game. Oh. I, I liked um, the uh, your website saying, "Oh, you can't right-click on this picture." It's like, "All right, I'll do a screenshot then." I'm type loading, but you're there. Oh fucking hell! Yeah, what's the matter with YouTube? What's the matter with that tonight? What's the matter with the program we're using for voice chat? Because I've uploaded this image and it's just like it's not sending. Oh yeah, that's good. I mean, that's not what I sent, but... Good evening and welcome to another 40 and words. Oh, 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 I was hoping oh. Fraser was going to pop, was going to come in, but you know what he's like. So I was going to do Kate Watch. We'll have to do Kate Watch when Fraser joins. Oh, what was this um, when we turn into spring and like Bill Oddy and all the others start observing yeah, hope not Kate. Uh, the whereabouts of Kate? What, the lesser spotted Kate? Lesser spotted, yeah. Lesser bruised I heard that's an endangered... I was going to say that's uh, an endangered species these days. The lesser bruised Kate, yeah. It's, uh, it's, yeah, they don't, they don't get seen in the wild much. No, no. But we'll do... We'll wait till Fraser comes on. Oh, is, is he there you go. Is he crack? The image I um, uploaded... It, it lo uploads fine on, te on Telegram... Yeah, uh, Discord. Uh, yeah, mm. I think maybe you should get rid of that Hobbit because <laughs> you know what Telegram's like. It doesn't like the 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 the, the beating material. No music tonight. I just did the music. Just did the theme tune. What's wrong with that? I did the theme tune. Was it because we started early? We started before ten past seven. Is that was that why everyone's confused? Ian's in. He's on the mend. I think he's coming back back to us soon. <laughs> oh, yeah, get well to him. Yeah. Oh, la laughing at Ian's misfortune. That's very nice, Hobbit. No, no. Um, I'm just laughing at the funny gifts. <laughs> Sorry. Ian, um, as you're one of the wireless listeners, I'll have to say it's a woman and she's an acrobat and has launched a cucumber in an ingenious way, which I find quite witty and droll. I, I, I believe um, some women do it with ping pong balls, the same sort of thing. Yes, yes, they do. But she's done it with a cucumber. And uh, she's got a woman assistant in the background, and she cheers when it gets launched. She says, oh, good show. Speaking of 14 subjects, Carol Vorderman looks like she's singing a song. Does she? And she's dancing. Oh god, it's awful, Hobbit. It's terrible. It's fourteen. It's like zombies. Uh, have a look. I've just put it in here. Is there any like um, you apps near it? <laughs> there's there's some unidentified bits of plastic. Unidentified um, dancing objects. Yeah. Hmm. We've got more followers on the Rumble than the YouTube. I'm sorry, more, more people watching the live thing than, than the YouTube. Um, hold on a minute. I've I've got something really 14 to show you, Hobbit. Um, while I was just having a look at some news on Telegram, I'm going to put... Uh, before, we get, before we get going... Um, this is... This is Princess Helen of Greece, Hobbit. Uh, I'll have to load it on the Twitter <laughs> website. Just, just take a look at Princess <coughs> Helen of Greece. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she's all right for a granny, isn't she? Is that, is that, is that Princess, Princess Chani of, um, of June? Uh, I'll tell you what. If the casting director had put in there, that would have been better casting, even though she's about four times older than uh, Chani was. Mm. But yeah, Whew, what a looker, eh? Hmm. Well, speaking of uh, women that are a looker, 
Uh, Miss Germany winner is uh, some beautiful melanated individual that happens to be in her early 60s. Mm. And she won it as opposed to, say, your average uh, Audi cashier, mm. who is, you know, a stunning blonde, blue, blue eyed, I was going to say blue hair, blonde eyed <laughs> stunner. But no. Dan the Stunner makes love like no other. Oh wait, this is Princess Helen of Free. Yeah, sorry, I was just I was looking at the. Um, oh, you're looking at the wrong thing. The, the, well, you you had the Twitter link there. Oh, sorry, and I, I thought that was. I went on the side. I didn't tell you, so I put it on the stream. Yeah, um, and yeah. What, like, do you, what do you think to Princess Helen of Greece then? Of it, isn't that Hugh Laurie wearing a wig? <laughs> I think she looks a bit more a bit more Henry Cavill, don't she? Ah, I'll have to have a look at what, who Henry Cavill is. Let's you have know, a look. Superman. Henry Cavill. No, that's uh, Christopher Reeve. Okay, I'm looking at Henry well, Cavill Prince now. Andrew. Maybe that's where the family resemblance comes in. And then I'm looking at that, yeah. Let's have a look at Prince Andrew. Um... Uh... He's, he's, the jowls are like no, he's very jowly, Prince Andrew. So uh, no, I see what you mean by Henry Cavill, but mm. I, I stand by like Hugh Laurie in drag. Hello, I'm fashionably late as always. Oh, you missed it, Francis. Yeah. What, what do you think to uh, Princess Princess Helen of Greece? She's a beauty. What? Have a look Where's on the, this? Have a look on the stream. I just found it while oh. I was while I was cruising Twitter. Also, I found the very. Um, uh, Fortean subject. I went down a rabbit hole of trying to because we were talking about nipples prior to the show, and I wanted to show uh, people diamond hard nipples of Casper, Wyoming. And then I found another picture, that, and it was much sad. nicer. So I I shared um, I shared it to the uh, the Food Network because um, oh, speaking of food. Because we, we, we like talking about food here at 40 and words. Yeah. Do you know what a lion's favourite fruit is? Don't know. It is a strawberry. Raw for strawberry. Do you know mm. why uh, killer whales don't eat penguins? Uh, because they're on a diet? Because they can't get the wrappers off. Oh, yeah. Oh. <sighs> Can penguins fly? No, they're a chocolate biscuit. <laughs> oh, yeah, we did that one last week, didn't we? I thought that was a good joke. Jim Cook says, I bet <laughs> Top Cat would. <laughs> I think he's talking about uh, Yes. <laughs> Helen of Greece. She's a, what a beauty. That's, uh, what a beauty. I like you that's guys. No, that, I'm, that's, I'm a, that's, a, that's a ma'am, isn't it? That's a man, baby. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> It's a man. Like it's man. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, like you have you seen like, on this thread? Have you seen Chuck, Chuck Schumer's wife? Is that a man as well? <laughs> have <laughs> have you not all seen ma'am's? Chuck Schumer's wife? Oh, oh, no. Well, no. run this. Obviously, oh, now you're here. We can do Kate Watch. You're our resident Bill Oddy. Yeah, we're going <laughs> to do Kate Watch. Hope, hope not Kate. Let's see. Oh, you may be right. Chuck Schumer watch instead of wife now, Hoppy. <laughs> Chuck Schumer watch. <laughs> it's a. Uh, <laughs> that'll, that'll be next week's. It's segment. uh blimey. Um, Excuse me. Look at. Uh, are you ready for a real page three stunner? Are you? Oh. What a beauty! What a beauty! Oh. Look at that! What a beauty! What a what a what a beauty, what a fantastic pair of bazongas. Yeah, so um <laughs> Who's got who's got who's got testosterone in that relationship? Yeah. Hang on. Isn't that isn't that Danny DeVito? <laughs> I don't know, I found a younger picture of her. Here you go. I'll show you your, a young, younger a young... version of Danny DeVito. Hold on. It is a younger version of Chuck Schoimer's. Do you remember he was Chuck Schoimer, he's the guardian at the gates? Of Israel, yeah. Uh, there's Chuck Schumer's oh, wife. Yeah. Are, are that, wow. that? I don't know. That might be one of his children. I don't. Uh, no, no, definitely. She looks a bit more feminine there. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah. no, that's his daughter. I thought that was his. Fucking oh shit! 
Oh, wait, hang on. I've seen him before. Look, yeah, Isn't he... Yeah. Um, oh, wait, what, where have I seen him before? Isn't he... Um, she does look like... Yeah, that, that, yeah. That, she looks... Isn't that... Uh, oh, what's his name? Who's the actor that played uh, Harry Potter? Uh, <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, fat, fat Daniel Radcliffe. Daniel Radcliffe. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, that, it's Daniel Radcliffe. <laughs> It's Ronnie. It <laughs> he insists that's Ronnie Corbett. <laughs> Ronnie Corbett. <laughs> and that's goodbye from me, and that's goodbye from him. Language, Timothy. <laughs> oh, oh. oh dude. It's the joke, isn't it? Billionaires and their wives. It's like, well, actually, we're going to go into this, aren't we, Hobbit? Because we spoke uh, about this earlier we... during Kate Watch. Uh, yes, I, I was like, what is it with, like, wh um, when you get to a certain, like, uh, no, I'll, get, I'll do the serious bit later, but basically, if you've got a face that looks like a slapped horse's ass, billionaires will want to marry you. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're not going to run away with their money, right? And, so some, might, and some might say princes. You can literally <laughs> wear to prince if you look like a sl slapped horse's ass well you no, Disney got no, it wrong. No, the pretty girls get the wedding the pretty girls get the wedding but you get to be the bit on the side the one they really love allegedly ah, i don't remember uh, that yes. in i don't remember allegedly, that in, yeah uh, <laughs> allegedly a lot of things alleged right should we start hope not kate watch do 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 where is kate do the thing watch. <laughs> We're doing a bit of creative fiction tonight. Where everything we say, and if it's got any relation to any persons alive or dead, yeah, it's just it's coincident. coincidental. Um, yeah, did 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 make me laugh that that tweet from the UNN when they said Ke Kensington Palace have basically done a. Do you remember the um? Do you remember the um? Forty Towers where 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 uh, Polly pretends to be uh, Sybil. No. Have you never seen that one where Sybil's gone away or something, and and her, or she's in hospital and her friends come round, so Polly has oh, to right. pretend to be Sybil. Have you never seen that one? Because well, uh, Polly was um, John Cleese's wife in real life, wasn't she? Yeah. But oh, yeah, that, that it, sounds like a good episode. I think I'd enjoy that. Yeah, that is quite funny because everyone's coming round and like Polly's Polly's just got like stuff. Stuff stuffed in her cheeks and glasses on, and she's <laughs> pretending to be Sybil. It's a pretty funny episode. Mm. But anyway, what's been going to, on this week in Kate Watch, Fraser? Uh, ah, okay, don't you want right. to preface this <laughs> with we're doing a creative writing play about like somebody, and what their if? name is Kate? What, uh, what if? if? Yes, that's yeah, what it. What if someone? Called, what if someone called Kate was missing what? and she hadn't been seen for eighty days? It's just like our Pound yeah. Box episode where we're not talking about any current events. No, this is this is purely work of fiction. This any, is yeah. this is a any fourteen really, yeah. episode. It's, no, Sped West said it's Rick Moranis. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, very good. very good. You got it. That's who I was thinking of. I was just like, who's that guy in Spaceballs? It's not Daniel Radcliffe. <laughs> it does look like Harry Potter, though. It does look like Harry Potter. You're a wizard, Harry. Yeah, um... you're, a, you're, you're a you're a Schumer. You're a guardian of the gates, Harry. <laughs> Great speeches, Chuck Schumer's. Remember, so... try and find the Chuck Schumer speech where he says, I'm the guardian of the gates, and by God, Israel's going to get all of the money we can give it because I am the guardian at the gates, just not the gates to America. Mm. Um, anyway, carry on. <laughs> Kate, watch gates to the purse. Yeah. So Fraser, do you want me to play this clip from Twitter? Yeah, go on then. I'll uh, just, well, I'll just... no, hold on. Let's 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 a recap of what's happened in like like what happened last time. So yeah, where we left off last time was um, I'll come out now. Jacob Rothschild's soul. Jacob Rothschild's soul yeah, has been put yeah. into well, Kate. Possibly. <laughs> okay, no, <laughs> possibly. Uh, but um, what ha what happened? So we've had the 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 photo in the car that came out. Um, uh, you know, saying, "Oh look, there she's she's in the car, right?" You know, so next did, to so her mom. The, the photo in the um, car came after the family yeah. photo, didn't it? And did you know they've also found out that the family photo did is... it? No, wait, no, no, hold on. Wait, it did. 
I thought the I, I thought the I thought, thing thought, yeah because look she's still alive look here's someone who doesn't look like Kate in in her mum's Audi yeah but she looks like her sister yeah if yeah. you put them side by side right yeah. okay um yeah so we had the photo in the car with her mum and not her sister um <laughs> um and um yeah so that's where we were then I was saying look she's alive everyone's alive so it's now alive. that brings us to this week. Oh, we I just need a, to rewind a little we bit. We got even the, more. Be- oh, right, I need okay. to rewind just a little <laughs> bit to the family photo because the family photo they've found her well, face is, is from Vogue from 2016, and the kids are all from a hospital visit <laughs> that was recently. <laughs> I can't remember which hospital, but apparently that's and um, and there's been raging debates on amateur photography things and they've gone oh yes this all fits that it's been fo- cobbled together in photoshop yeah so the, the, the recently the kensington palace released a oh look she's still alive guys look here she had the mother's day photo with her uh, kids look um, look she's apologized she's apologized yeah. for the for the fight now now, I've now, been, first, been treated very well. The credit of the like photo, today. when no one knew what was going on, and like people had a a, a look see, uh, the credit of the photo was going to William for taking it. Right then, we had the Associated Press send out for the first time I ever think I've seen it anyway a kill order on that photo. Right? <laughs> yes. Which means yeah, yeah. do it's not post notice. this. This it, it denotes. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, so basically, uh, because there were some irregularities in the photo, <laughs> as as Hemi was alluding to, with the what people think is her from Vogue, uh, a Vogue some magazine financial irregularities cover. with uh, Mr. Crilly, yes. uh, Father Crilly's yeah. account. Yeah. Which okay, so she's uh, have you got the photo up on the? Uh, do you want me to put the photo the, back uh, up? Yeah, oh. put it. Up. Uh, I think put it might up. still be in that photo. So let's go over what's actually like going on here. Right, so let me see. What I've got. I'm just, it's just on the Discord, anyway. Oh God, I thought I already had it downloaded because I put it up. It's in the general chat. Um, I'll, da- I'll have to download it again. Give me a sec. Keep talking. To, uh, oh, you, you need to talk about it, don't you? Yeah. 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 Okay, but right. So the kill notice went out, and everyone was like, "Oh, this the uh, this is edited." Okay. So then, right. Kensington Palace uh, releases a press statement saying um, Kensington Palace releases a message saying that Princess of, we- Princess of Wales personally apologised for editing her family photograph. Like many uh, quotation, uh, like many amateur photographers, I do occasionally experiment with editing. I wanted to assess my apologies for any confusion <laughs> this may have caused. It's yes. fucking bizarre, isn't it? Um, yeah, so uh kate is a budding amateur uh you know uh <laughs> youtube uh, so the photo. the photos up again i found i found yeah. it again yeah so okay so what's wrong with this photo <laughs> um right so the, her face is from vogue which was always saying um if you, i don't can you zoom in on the 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 girl's uh like sleeve because right. that's one of the most glaring ones. It's gonna take a bit of a minute. We've also minute. got we've also we've also got the, the the case of what the hell is happening with these fingers? Uh, is this AI? Yeah. Um. Yeah. So if you if you you see where Kate's hand is on the the girl, it's the, um, no, it's on the boy, isn't it? That it's, that it's right blurry. Right. No, no, it's 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 the the sleeve. Or right you saying her, her fingers are longer on her left hand? Boy than the girl? Yeah. No. No. No, no, it's not, it's the sleeve. You're if you know if you zoom in there. All oh, right, hold on. Enhance. On the left hand, on her left hand, enhance. Zoom in, yeah, enhance. Um, well, I think that's that, that's, that's a big one. Can get it. All right, okay. But anyway, yeah. If you look, if you if you got the photo, you 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 probably would have seen this. But like, there's there's several like inconsistency errors. Window panes don't match up. The the boy's fingers on the right there. Uh. You know, that's a bit like Hello AI. Didn't see you there. Um Oh I'll tell you what, hold and, on a sec. I've yeah. got a, um hold on. I've so I've found one yeah, where so, somebody somebody's ringed all the errors. Ah, uh, okay. Right, yeah. 
So there you go. These are these yeah, are the photography. The, the slew of like editing mistakes. Ah, right. Yeah, there's a slew of these. To be honest, <laughs> to be honest, I wouldn't get too hung up on the windows. That could just be yeah. the age of the property. I, I'm, I'm wouldn't get too much yeah. too hung up on those. Yeah. Yeah, is it, it's, it's more girls, everything else. The girl's also, wearing odd shoes as well, isn't she? One of the shoes is suede and the other one's shiny. Oh, yeah. Didn't notice that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So why, Wait, the, mouth, heels? why well, the mouth's ring, ringed? Is that because they're... Um, the teeth, yeah. Is it the uh, teeth I don't know. That, are weird, that are wrong? Yeah, maybe, yeah. Um... Yeah, there's some inconsistencies on these, you know, for, oh, I only touched up a few things. The, the most noticeable one many people are pointing out is, where's her ring finger? Why yes. is there no ring on her finger? I noticed that, I noticed that the other day, yeah. A ring's, yeah. A ring's missing. It's like, it? that, that would be a bit of a... It's the blurry hair as well, isn't it? What's going on here, it? then? It's, she's yeah. got blurry hair. Yeah, her face is definitely from Vogue, like the mm. Vogue magazine front cover, which means... I, well, I don't know what it means, and this is why everyone's like, oh, what the hell's going on? Is she they've even ring, alive? They've right ringed the boots. I don't know why they've, they've ringed the boots. Do you? Um, it might it might be just, the, the, again, like fuzziness of the photo. Some of it's like to do with that. Um, Hard to see when it's um, yeah, uh, so small, but... not very good contrast on our side. Yeah, hold yeah. on a sec. Let's see. No, that's but yeah, so there's been a lot of uh, a lot of like you know oh, yeah, this I whole thing about where's with at least I can see what's wrong with one of the boots. That upper one, yeah. You see yeah. how the boots are around her foot? Yeah, it it, it yeah back, yeah that looks boots. like AI, doesn't it? It's like two boots. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. That looks like AI's done it. And I yeah. don't know I don't know why that other that's one's right. wrong. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Like it. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, we're not. Doing the song. Uh, let's see if the tweet. Oh is. shit! I know what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see the, sh the, yeah, yeah. Can you not see it? No. Can you not? Look at it. Just look at it. It the 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 sole of the boot is much bigger than the actual oh, shoe. Eyes. Oh yeah. Can you not see that? Yeah, I can see it. Yes, I'll see it now. Uh, yeah, you see it now. It. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even notice that first time. Holy shit! Yeah, like what the fuck? So what's the <laughs> um? So what's wrong with um? the boy's legs then finger i don't know can you bring that up yeah i can hold on maybe we'll... yeah some of these weren't even like like by the time i i, I haven't seen the rest of this so i only noticed a few of them but yeah that, that's just that's not right <laughs> that's ai that's gotta be ai yeah it's it's ai and photoshop isn't it i think the right yeah as we're looking at it, the hand on the right, there's a finger missing. Oh, shit. Yeah, you are right. Uh, yeah. The, the other hand is weird. The the It's the index finger is a stump, isn't it? Oh, shit, the thumb. Have you seen the thumb? It's looked like there's two thumbs <laughs> underneath his thumb. You don't see that, that pink thing underneath? Yeah, I was thinking that could be a little finger. So that's why I'm saying. Why does he have his finger see. crossed? No, but if he, if his hand is round the the, uh, the arm of the chair, it would have been on the bottom, right? How do you get the little finger up by his thumb underneath it? I mean, I guess you could, I'm, but it. I'm it's looking at the. Weird uh, to do that. I'm looking at the other yeah. hand, which is resting upon the um, uh, table there, chair. and it's like I'm wondering why he has his fingers oh. crossed. Yeah, it's just weird, isn't it? You mean it's, his, it's his, AI... his, he's missing a finger, though? It's an AI thing, no? isn't it? Oh, no, he's not. I, I'm not yeah. saying it that. I'm just saying I find it rather unusual. AI, AI has real trouble with fingers, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, it seems like it, yeah. So I'll, go, I'll, go back to yeah the, I'll go back to the big ringed picture. So the other one is her hand that's round the boy. That's... Um, that's blurry, isn't it, in the photo? Yeah, I think so, yeah. I don't think that... I, I can't see anything wrong with the jumper immediately down from her hand. I think that's just tucked in. That could just be weirdly tucked in. Uh, I could, yeah, that could just be that. Uh, the patterns, I guess, is all wonky on the arm, I'm guessing. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what's up hair. 
I'm not sure yeah, with the legs. I'm, I don't know what they're trying to say about say with the legs. Yeah, it could be bag. It could be baggy, right? Trousers just could be baggy. Yeah, baggy trousers. Do, 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 do. Baggy baggy trousers. trousers do, 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 do. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's just just like the hair and that is like blurry and shit. But the the more obvious ones are like yeah the. That shoe is definitely AI, which then, like, mm. why would you only AI shoe? <laughs> is it not? Like, sorry to be a Stephen J- James here, but at the angle, is there, like, is it not being shadowed by the other foot? I mean, I, I assume yeah. that well, the light. You can clearly coming... see it's, like, coming out bigger than the actual, like, shoe. Because the sole, right, is meant to, like, fit the top part, right, the canvas bit. Uh, no, it's, there's a little are. bit of a gap around it, but th- if you look at if you look at yeah, but that's huge. If you look at the sh- the one in front, there's there's a bit. It's a bit bigger, but it's not massive like that is. That's like a yeah, no inch. Yeah, isn't it? it's like clown shoe, isn't it? It's like yeah. a clown shoe, like yeah, yeah. And then there's the weird do- weird double shoe of- effect at the back. Yeah. Um, her neck's so blurred, it, isn't it? it? Yeah, it begs the question, like, why... What, so, if you've got one part of the photo is AI, like, the rest of it must be then, right? So, it's AI, and then they've touched it up. Yeah. Obviously, they didn't... She didn't go through all of it, and they've released it by accident, and... But Kate... But Kate... But absolutely Kate, not not Will, not Will, William, using her account, as she has absolutely yeah. apologised for mm-hmm. it. Yes, absolutely. You know, no proof of life other than you know, their say so. Um, but yeah, I guess this has really like put a fire under like the American media and everything else as well. Now people are talking about it. So you mean the media which are allowed is... to talk about this issue as opposed yeah. to the ones that aren't? Mm. And it's a good thing we're doing this broadcast from Sealand. But again, we're we're talking about <laughs> completely fictitious entity yes. that. Has no mm-hmm. relation to uh, current events or people Look, real or imagined. Yeah. Any Look, the royal resemblance family are the or... nicest people in the world. They would never they're ever just like the greatest. you. Ever. Yeah, they're amazing. Like, so you know, don't get any wrong thoughts about any of this. We're just pointing out that the photo is badly done. Okay. You know, there's no, there's nothing wrong here. Nothing to see here, guys. Okay. It's just a bad Move photo. Along. That, that, yeah, move along. Okay. Uh, but so um, now, now we on for, on some completely swivel-eyed, insane, absolutely nuts conspiracy theories that are yep. absolutely totally made up about it now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. And he obviously have, you know, brought you know these heinous conspiracy theories to the door of absolute lies. You know the royal family. Absolute yeah. Lies. Absolute lies. You know. Um, yeah. So, so, I mean, where do you, where do you want to start? You, you want to go... start with um, the guy who killed himself. Yes. Yeah, so the was it Duke what's his of? Name? Oh, allegedly what's his killed name? himself. Yeah. Alleg- yes, allegedly. Yeah. No, he absolutely killed himself. Um, it's been uh... Thomas Kingston. Thomas Kingston. That's it. Yes, the Duke. Alleged Duke Thomas of... Kingston. So here's mm. what was in the newspaper. So this is true. Thomas, Thomas Kingston died from a traumatic head wound and and gun found. Mm. Are these two things linked or are they separate? <laughs> we'll, we'll, like... never, we'll never know. <laughs> well, yes, he died of blunt trauma. Yeah, I guess he took the gun, the butt of the gun and smashed his own head in, you know? Uh, I mean... yeah. it, these things happen. Yeah. Does it doesn't mean it doesn't mean he was shot. You know, does it mean he, he, yeah, he was shot in the back of the head twice? So yeah, here's okay. a quote from, I don't know who this is a quote from, but he said, he found Mr. Kingston deceased with a catastrophic head injury. A gun was present at the scene. Emergency services were called. Police are satisfied the death is not suspicious. A post-mortem has been <laughs> undertaken by Dr. Jones, a consultant histopathologist, <laughs> and a provisional cause of death has been given as a traumatic wound to head. Isn't it normally gunshot wound to the head, or is it because he did it with? Did he do it with a shot? What was the gun? Was the gun? Was the gun a, a a bullet gun or was it a shotgun? 
it's it's a just it's a complete red herring. A gun was found at the scene, a traumatic wound to the head. How dare you try to insinuate that Nothing, these two... It wasn't is it, is a it suspicious gun. Is it okay. Chekhov's gun? Is that what we said? The gun was yeah. found at the scene. It, it was gonna be look, Hemi, it's yeah. not suspicious, okay? Like, when you find a body with a traumatic wound to the head yeah. and a gun at the scene of the crime, it's yeah. not suspicious, okay? Yeah. Not why suspicious, you, one bit. Why would you say it's no. suspicious? <laughs> I mean, nobody's saying suspicious. That's no, just uh, crazy is. talk. No. Yes. No. No. I'm not saying it's suspicious. You're not saying it's suspicious. No, none of us are saying there's anything suspicious going on here. No. So, this led to a few crazy conspiracy theories. Um, Which are all unsubstantiated and not true, by the way. Yeah. Have you got the Twitter oh, Did one, you know he was a close friend of Pippa Matthews, the Princess of Wales' sister? Ah, oh. allegedly, the pair was said to have dated oh. in 2011. Allegedly, mm. no, this is a quote. Oh yeah, but I'm still saying allegedly, just in case. <laughs> there might be a, there might be a Twitter video that might uh, you know allow, uh, bring to light some of the reasons why this may be the case. Right, we got that. Uh, one I'll, in ju the I'll Discord, just pl I'll just play the audio because I can't be bothered to play the thing. Uh, I'll play it through to you, lads, so you can hear it. Yeah, that's already. Now, yeah. allegedly, Kate Middleton may allegedly. have been pregnant with Thomas Kingston's allegedly. baby. Allegedly. To make matters worse, Thomas I Kingston was found allegedly. dead just a few days ago, locked inside a room allegedly. at his parents' apartment baby. with a traumatic allegedly. head injury. For those that don't know, Thomas was in a relationship with Kate's sister, Pitt Middleton, for quite some time. And he's allegedly. stayed in contact with Kate ever since. Allegedly. Even the recent WhatsApp messages have been leaked showing Thomas was sending her messages wishing her a speedy Allegedly. recovery in terms of her stomach issues. Allegedly. Kate fell pregnant with Thomas's baby and did she refuse to have an abortion after having three children? And then did someone forcibly remove the pregnancy? Alle again, it's allegedly. The longer the Buckingham allegedly. Palace stays so He could have allegedly kicked the baby out of her, allegedly. <laughs> I mean, allegedly, allegedly like, uh, you know, it, it, this has happened before in a tunnel in France somewhere. Um, <laughs> allegedly. Uh, allegedly. Allegedly Prince Philip and the White Uno, allegedly. Yeah. <laughs> Silent on this issue, the more speculation has gone and run riot. And Kate hasn't been seen since Christmas Day. So something is clearly fucking going on here. He was blatantly allegedly. murdered. She hasn't been seen since December. There's something going on. Surely there's something going Allegedly. on. Let me know what you think in the comments. As always, I will keep you up to date for fuck's sake. It's going to keep you up to what? date for fuck's sake. I object to his alleged use of bad allegedly. language, allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> yes, allegedly. Is it like the allegedly. Marines where you have to begin and end your statements with I'll sir? Uh, someone in the comments said, I read four four years ago, they royals have to give their stuff back to the Rothschilds when the Queen dies. IMO, I bet Harry is the real prince and William is a Rothschild. Uh, oh. no. Oh, how about this one? Or if she is pregnant, are they keeping, the, keeping her hidden until after she has the baby, then adopting it out? Uh. No, why would they... Why, if it was his baby, why would they kill her? Him, then. Um, just I, I like, don't like where this is going. Because because we, we we we've done we've done this rodeo before, haven't we? In nineteen ninety seven. Um. And, yeah, but that was a brown baby allegedly. Well, it, it, it seems it doesn't matter if there's a if there's a threat to the crown, and the, and the the uh, the. Well, alleg allegedly, of... allegedly, some people say yeah, that Harry might allegedly. not might not be Charles's allegedly. So we have done True, this rodeo sort of before, allegedly. I wouldn't want to speculate on such matters, mm. allegedly. So, but then, but, but then, why wouldn't they just? Have, uh, I guess because they didn't announce the pregnancy, right? Well, they, they are also known, like, they are also they, saying we... Princess Kate could feel the effects of the surgery for the next nine months. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. So when she hasn't appeared for nine more months, then. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> How many was it? Eighty days so far. So she's done nearly three months. Only six months yeah. to go. You've got uh. a really poorly tummy. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, speaking of which, like, so let's say um, you have a cesarean. Now, my understanding of that is abdominal mm -hmm. muscles need to be cut in order to reach the womb underneath. Yeah. yeah. Would you be immediately just sort of running around afterwards where your wound has been stapled together and getting thrown around Stop. by... by mo Prometheus was a really dumb film, allegedly. <laughs> no, it was a dumb film. I don't, you know, need to, I don't think you need to say allegedly on the end of that one. Yeah, but, yeah, but Did you but know allegedly uh, Ridley Scott magic. has got a knighthood, allegedly? <laughs> he has got space a Space magic comment. Oh, that's alleged, though. So, then, uh, so, allegedly... What happened allegedly in in um in Minecraft, in Minecraft mm. William, William William was playing um, Street Fighter in Minecraft. He um, in Euro Truck Simulator. <laughs> yeah, he, wait, Euro Shotgun Simulator. He, he <laughs> shot. <laughs> the, there was a catastrophic wound caused, but it wasn't by the man in by the man who died. Um, and then allegedly after after Shotgun Simulator twenty four. He had a go at um, Street Fighter Street Fighter Eight with with Kate, and that's why she hasn't been. What seen. the special uh, scene where you have to like kick Cammy in the stomach as as often as possible? You know that bit with the car from Street Fighter Two, like like that. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's, yeah. it's got it's got um. Is her name Cammy or shape, is it Cammy? In the shape of a woman, right? Yeah, yeah. Cammy, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the special allegedly. stage. How, how quickly can you beat yeah. it up? Allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. Yeah. So in Street Fighter 2, uh, William dealt with the wayward wife. Street Fighter 2, normal Street Fighter 2 Turbo, because I like Turbo. So in Street Fighter 2 <laughs> Turbo, William dealt with the wayward wife. The way wayward wife? Yes, allegedly. Are you Wonderful Wath? No, I didn't say Rayward oh, sorry. wife, did I? I said wayward uh, no, wife. I I just, when you wayward wife, I just think that wibbly wobbly one from Woth would say something like that. Allegedly. Um, but apparently, but allegedly, Kate did all allegedly. this because Harry has a love of his life. And wow, what a beauty, isn't she? A bit. Uh, my God. Like, allegedly, her face <laughs> looks like a horse's ass that's been slapped. <laughs> And when she laughs, it sounds like whinnying. Uh, so let, let's have a look at the beauty. Uh, what's her name? Rose. Some. What's her name? Fraser Rose. Something. English Rose. I don't ten know. out I don't of ten. Rose. English Rose. <laughs> Is it I Rose Hawthorne or something? Oh, oh, something shit, like that. Yeah. At it. Rose oh, Hambury. Sorry, Rose Hambury. And wow, what a beauty! That's a real. The, those those Wales, Ooh, hey, those, hey. those those Windsors allegedly love having a bit of steak at home, but they'll go out for McDonald's all the time, won't they? <laughs> My God, <laughs> there's no choice. There's no fucking but <laughs> holy shit. I mean, w would you like to uh, uh, offer me a salt lick? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 no, 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 no chins were harmed in in the in the making of her and William's baby. <laughs> well, I think a lot of oats harmed, were consumed, no. Yeah, but yeah, what a beauty! You know, who, she? You, know you, you know, you know who that looks like. She Jacob looks like Posh that Dippy Girls Bird off of the what, Maltesers commercial. I'm saying she has a striking resemblance to like uh, Jacob Rothschild. I wonder. Ooh. Hmm. Do you know what I think? Can, can they not just start having children with like David Coulthard or something so we can get the chins back <laughs> into the royal family for a bit? <laughs> well, they, they, they're trying to breed the, uh, the uh, what's it called? The um... Hanoverian chin but, out. I was going to say the Habsburg chin <laughs> back in. Yeah, I'm back in. Yeah, they well, need it's, to get it's the, just they so need good. to bring the chin chin. They need to bring the chins back. What a beautiful chin you got there! <laughs> nice chin you've got got there. Shame, shame, shame if centuries of inbreeding took, got rid of that. Lot got rid of that, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh Lord, Lord oh, my. So there we go. That, so that's allegedly what's happened, and allegedly. But I must say, this is all alleged. Alleged. In Minecraft, Street Fighter, and uh, Call of Duty.
to AP allegedly. have denounced the royal. <laughs> so that's Kate. Oh, you've so, also no, got the. Have not... you seen the new the new sighting in the back of a car? Uh, is that the that was out ages before though? That's the thing. That's what I think people are getting like. The one where she's turning to the side against the brick wall. Yeah. In the back. Yeah, there's something fun funky with that photo as well. The bricks are different on the well, top of the car to the commu- ones through the window. Community notes said that the image shown in the tweet is an older older photo and not the photo which was taken today, mm-hmm. which is on the back of someone's head. So there's a oh, where's the newer yeah. photo? So um, yeah, what, the brickwork was a I'll bit funky the, as well. I think I found the newer photo. Hold on a sec. Let me just show the enhance. But this looks Zoom like an old photo enhance. of her. Uh, that, that, and then uh, I'm afraid everyone. I'm going to have to get rid of the uh, the beautiful English rose Ro- rose Hanbury. Mm. So this is the latest oh, photo. Sure. It's isn't it? through the generations of her beauty. Yeah. But even Hello, this, the yellow but even this looks like an old back. photo, doesn't it? There's an old photo. They're calling it yeah, Kate Spiracy. Exactly similar. Yeah, exactly. Hold on, I'll, I'll, I'll Kate Spiracy. Yeah. Uh, dear. Right. So I'll add another image. Okay. That one, and I'll put them side by side. Oh wow! Who's got? Who's this dashing young? Oh shit! Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, all right. What are they playing at then? What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. The, yeah. She's she allegedly dead, mate. I think. I le- no, I think she's allegedly. Or something. She's alleged, allegedly. Allegedly. Um. Are you telling me that allegedly her Minecraft lost spawn has round been two. She allegedly lost <laughs> round two. <laughs> round three. Well, they can't keep oh, this yeah. up forever, right? <laughs> Someone's going to have to, like, I don't know, maybe they have to get a, like, Biden mask on her or something. You know, fucking well, yeah, well, gonna get some action to play her. Well, yeah, like... <sighs> But there you go. There's Kate. I don't Watts. see how they're gonna like. I don't see when you know this supposed Easter thing. When is Easter this year? It's at April. Yeah, it's or the end um, of March. Isn't she supposed to be appearing? Is it the eleventh of March? No, not the eleventh of March. April. Is it eleventh of April? She she'll probably appear mm. on the twentieth of April, won't she? Celebrate <laughs> Hitler's birthday. <laughs> no, weed day. Weed day, I bet. God's sake. Yeah, well, yeah we, we, we celebrate God, Hitler by smoking here's, here's marijuana. Here's a completely undoctored photo of them. Oh, no, wrong one. Uh, here's, here's a completely undoctored photo of the completely normal royal family. Allegedly. You see what I did there? <laughs> yeah, Adam's family. <laughs> do, do, do. Do, 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 do. Um, yeah, Rose Hanbury would fit, <laughs> in, mean, fit right. in beautifully in that picture, wouldn't she? Yeah, yeah. you could play what's her name the, the, the what's her name the Letitia is it or uh, Aunt Rose? Yeah. Uh, oh, you mean um, oh what what's Angelic? No, it's not Angelic. What's what's yeah, the, the girl? What's, what's the, the what's the yeah? Morticia. What's the Morticia. That's yeah. it. Morticia. Yeah. So um, the the real the real the real fourteen aspect to this is uh why would you rather boff rose hanbury than uh you really fit missus ah, now this is the bit which i i, <laughs> can't, I thought about maybe earlier, maybe, right? maybe it was just maybe you know now, three kids down the line it just wasn't tight enough I don't now know. I've, I've said this before right but have you noticed that uh these these uh alleged people are allegedly evil and and therefore you're trying to think yeah. well why would they do that because i wouldn't do that it's like well, there's your problem, you see. You don't think like someone that way. They think like, yes, I will have uh, children with this woman because look how evil she is. Hmm. 
They they don't think like we do. That's why like billionaires. Well, Charles has intense. gone. Look, Will, look, William. I know you. I know Rose Ambry's the one for you. But we've got to have kids with chins. Like we can't have <laughs> children who literally just have an upper jaw, and the bottom jaw is completely useless. We can't do that because they won't be able to. Eat we're, or we're, we're not having a repeat of the Habsburgs. <laughs> <laughs> like we can't, we can't have the chin completely vanish, William. No, you're not having children with her. I think it's something like. Mm. I could have got yeah, to, maybe, got maybe to have she's... children with Angela Rayner. She's got a big chin. Hmm. Maybe it's a ritual. How old was uh, Harry in that when they were like eleven or something, weren't they? When Diana died. Ooh. Oh, okay then. Yeah. Maybe it's a ritual thing, maybe you know. <clears throat> Just saying, maybe there's a interesting, you know, when we've got to go at a certain age so that they can be indoctrinated into whatever. It does seem a bit odd, doesn't it? Allegedly, mm. um, allegedly, I'm saying seen, it's um, odd. Has anyone seen uh, Alex Jones's latest tweet? It's a bit bizarre to say the least. No, he I has been actually. getting a bit uh, eccentric. Is he lately. getting spicy? Is he getting no? Spicy? It's just fucking bizarre. Um, I will eat your leftist ass. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> I actually know the co- I, I know the context that's from. Um, he's talking <laughs> about like if there's food riots coming about, and he's saying like, look, <laughs> if it comes to the choice where we have got no food, I will eat your leftist ass. He's talking about cannibalism. Oh, right. Okay. Oh. Yeah. So, you know, it's 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 no big deal. He's just talking about cannibalism. Oh, I found out which, the origin you know, of uh, barbecue's name. It's because his mum owned a barbecue restaurant. And not because he sets roasts people alive and eats bits of them. No. Which, by the way, is, is a... that's just bigotry. And people like, I get. Um, upset about it, but that's because um, they don't season the people. <laughs> season the people. Yeah. Is it, is, is Emmy disappeared again? No, I'm here. Oh, right, okay. You just you just kind of you were just enjoying a bit of barbecue. Me. I just stopped talking. That was all. Mm. You were just enjoying some barbecue. Yeah. Yeah. Barbecue. But barbecue. Uh. Oh, Vibs Vibs Cartel is um, trending. Vibs Cartel. I don't know who Vibs Cartel, cartel is, cartel. but uh, he's he's been arrested or something. Hmm. Yeah. So, right? Do you want to talk? Do you want to talk about some fun stuff now? Do you want to talk about a restaurant that's shaped shaped like a flying saucer? I actually do. And before we do this, can I just say, but before that, um, in Oxford, we had Atomic Pizza and Atomic Burger. And then you're like, what if we sell Did this business? It, uh, <laughs> I that's a good question. I don't know. I've never seen the basement, bitch. Yeah. Um, we ain't seen the basement, bitch. Uh, so uh, is, we need to cook, Jesse. We need to cook burger. Atomic. Is a picture of uh, the Megatron restaurant. Why do they call it Megatron? That was the name of the business, wasn't it? So it's not to do with Transformers. Uh, so what year it is? Nineteen ninety. So possibly they were taking a risk there, weren't they? It seems unusual. Mm. Um, on, on the evening of 26th of March, 1990, a strange visitor arrived in rural Cambridgeshire. The police control centre at Hinchinbrook received multiple phone calls to report a following saucer just outside the village of Alconbury. When officer, officers arrived at the scene, they found exactly that, a huge spaceship sitting on, sitting on the edge of the A604 and lighting up the sky. What had confused so many passing motorists was the fact the opening event for a new restaurant, this was the Megatron. A vision of the future that was not destined to last. This unique landmark would stand for just 18 years before being bulldozed to the ground. But it packed a lot into its short life, including some brushes with the peculiar. Um, this is, like why why wasn't this like um listed? Like why isn't something like this list? Like we should we should be they should be forced to upkeep things like this, shouldn't they? 
Yeah. Uh, you, I think the argument there is like, uh, who's going to pay for the upkeep? Um, surely there's always someone who's going to move in there, isn't there? Yeah, I mean, they they did that with the Millennium Dome, didn't they? They turned it into the O2 retail park experience. Yeah. Um, the Megatron was a perfect recreation of the classic 1950s flying saucer. Like Doctor Who's TARDIS, the building created the illusion of being larger inside than out. Uh, as customers entered, they would see futuristic flashing lights and lasers. Well, they weren't futuristic because they were made with current technology, weren't they? So they weren't that futuristic. Weird to think how um, how futuristic uh, uh, lasers are. Is. <laughs> well, they, they, lasers are still futuristic, but they came out in the 60s. Yeah. And speaking of which, do you remember like 20 years ago when those laser pointers were all the rage? What happened to those? Uh, people were blinding pilots. Oh, what were the little, the, the little tiny... What? Oh, so yeah. what, they banned them? Yeah. Okay. What happened to those, like, you know you see it in, in science fiction films, those weird lasers, you know the ones where it was like a diamond shape and it used to go up and down and it was like, and it'd light up bits of fog and that. You know the ones I mean? Uh, what, hmm. you mean the laser with a lens on it? Yeah. Sorry, I, I don't know about that. Um, I'm trying to. I can't think of anything off the top of my head that would have that in it. But they were weird, and you don't see them anymore. Um, staff were dressed as aliens and robots. Diners could buy special star fries, chicken nuclear nuggets, and space suit spuds, and orange orange Jupiter juice. Surely that'd be that should be orange Mars juice, shouldn't it? Um, no, orange Jupiter juice. Yeah. Juice is from Jupiter. Everyone knows that. Yeah, but orange isn't. <laughs> Jupiter isn't orange. Um, no, it was Mars is red, isn't juice. it? It's not orange. Um, yeah. In a pioneering in innovation for its time, orders were taken via touch screens on a central console, a feature that McDonald's would adopt 25 years later. There was nothing else like it before or since. The Megatron was the brainchild of local businessman Danny Blundell, father of Formula One driver Mark Blundell, Danny was an ambitious man going from humble beginnings to owning a string of businesses. According to Mark, my dad's mother died when he was little and when he left school at 13, he couldn't read or write. My mum taught him all that later. His advantages drove him to be the, be, be the man he was. He started as a panel beater and sprayer, but really he was a wheeler dealer, always working and always dealing. For Danny, the Megatron would be his crowning achievement, the first restaurant of what he hoped would become a chain. He consulted architects and special effects artists, visited Elstree Studios to see the, the sets of Star Wars and Aliens, and planned to have working robots and holograms at the entrance to welcome guests. The rural location seems an unusual choice when you consider an Amer the American airman then stationed at RAF Alconbury. The Megatron was built right at the entrance to the base, and the sci-fi theme and diner-style food were aimed squarely at the Americans. Visitors even had the choice of paying in dollars or pounds. So get 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 this then, Hobbit. So you're going to have a meal of this. Strawberry space shake, special star fries, nuclear chicken nuggets, banana space shake, mega burger and cheese, orange Jupiter juice, space suit spud and blistic butter, Fanta orange, Ballistic space butter. suit spud and protein beans. How much are you paying for that lot? Uh, £6.50. <laughs> Fraser. Oh, ten quid most at most. Thirteen pound forty five in nineteen ninety. That's not bad, is it? That's that's all right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. What's um, it now? Like four hundred quid. Uh, <laughs> yes. All that food. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, a Barbarian dollar. The small former county of Huntingdonshire, later absorbed into Cambridgeshire has more than its fair share of uncanny stories. This is at least partly due to its position at the crossroads of central England. The Megatron itself was situated on Ermine Street, the, the Roman road leading from London to Lincoln and York. The Great North Road and later the A1 would also pass through the area. Many local ghost stories refer to incidents on these roads. At Nuns, Nunsbridge Hinching Book, the ghost of a nun is said to step in front of passing cars causing them to swerve and crash. 
There was also the story of three ghostly crushed cars that silently burn at night and of figures in military uniforms from various time periods. The airbase too has many ghost stories to list there, including poltergeist and disembodied children's voices. Matcham's oh, Bridge. you know, there's a horror film called Poultry Geist, Night of the Chicken Dead. <laughs> it's really bad, but really gory. Then again, like, have you ever watched a horror film and gone, oh yeah, that's really good? Like, did you know the thing, apparently, that's not a horror film, that's a psychological thriller? Um, the, yeah, it is, but they, they put too much special effects in it. To... If it was a psychological thir- thriller, it'd be someone in here's the thing, we've got to figure out who it is. So I wouldn't oh, okay. call it. I, I wouldn't call it a psychological thriller, thriller because it's t- it. I think psychological ah. thriller. Th- the thing has got too much show and not enough tell. I, whereas, whereas a proper right, so psychological th- thriller, thriller would be more tell, in my opinion. So in this case, it's it's the psychological thriller, but it's visceral. Yes. I you know, it, it's not. I think it being visceral doesn't make it a psychological thriller. Ah, oh, okay. That's just Look at me using words like That's visceral. just my opinion, but that's why I wouldn't call it a psychological Is that a game thriller. theory? Sorry. <laughs> game theory. Opinion. So, um, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of like... it. I think, isn't, isn't, there a, isn't there a film where someone's a werewolf and nobody knows who it is, but that's more psychological because there's a lot less show in it? Is that the American Werewolf in London? No, there's... I think it's called This, this Werewolf... The werewolf must die or something. It's got Peter Cushion in it. It's an old Hammer film. It was oh, like okay. a. They did one as well, which was like a play at home game. <laughs> like you watch the film, and at certain points, you have to guess who the who the werewolf is. It's like really weird. So it, it's is really this weird like um, like a thing in Star Wars where they just said, "Let's get all these Hammer horror actors and and put them in in Star Wars." <laughs> no, well, it was because it was filmed at Elstree, wasn't it? So that's why they used a lot of. Um... Oh, and it's just those. I was going to say those are the actors they knew. Yeah. So then, generally, what they'd do is they'd hire a load of local actors, and then you'd have like a couple of big name Yank ones, wouldn't you? Oh, uh, that makes sense. Because there's a oh, there's there's an there's a really old low budget film. I think it's called On a Majesty's Secret Service. It's fe- It's set in like tower blocks in London or something, and it's got. Uh, Denzel Washington in it. It's a bit weird. Isn't that like Roger Moore's James Bond on the Majesty's Secret Service? Yeah. It's called, it must be called something else then, but it's got um, Denzel Washington. It's got a a, um, title that's similar to that. Oh, cool. Um, Yeah, but I I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say the thing is psychological, Cara. No. Sorry. What, what What do you think? Do you agree with me, disagree with me? What me? Yeah. Uh, like, I, I mean, there is psychological elements in it, and it's very claustrophobic. Mm. I mean, because I was saying to a friend, like, what's the difference between horror and psycho? And he says, well, the thing would be psychological uh, horror, whereas in horror, it's more about like. And I said, what, like saw movies? Like, so, yeah, they're horror because they're very gory, and it's like, ah, so in that case, Evil Dead is a psychological horror. He's no, never he's seen the Evil Dead or Evil Dead Two. I think psychological is... Uh, it depends how much show there is. I think if there's a lot of show that show, then it's a horror film. If there's a lot of tell, then it's a psychological horror. Yeah, that sounds about right. I don't know. That, that's, just, that's just... Well, that's my opinion, anyway. That's that, that's the way oh. I'd say it. Um, Because there are some oh, really effective... Cause... Is it like The Lift? It, what, what's that Sh- M. Night, M. Night Shyamalan, Shyamalan film where they're all stuck in the lift? Is it The Devil? Oh, uh, yeah, good question. I don't, I don't know. Oh, well, that, that's watch. that's psychological. Um, I, I've never watched it, but that's psychological because everyone's stuck in the lift and one person's the devil, but you don't know who it is until the end. Ah, uh, okay. So that would be psychological because, because there's not so much tell. It's all about the horror of the situation. It's, it's about the fear of what's going to happen rather than actually seeing what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking to myself, why am I talking about this? And the reason is, is because we're talking about the Elstree Tree Space Age uh, <laughs> flying sort of, uh, thing. Oh yeah, the, that does look that does look like the spaceship that the thing's made. Then 
the 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 spaceship the thing made in the basement. Can you imagine the thing versus aliens. Uh, what? Well, so the what thing the tries hell? to absorb the alien. It's going ow 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 ow. <laughs> 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 Yeah, pretty, pretty much. <laughs> ow, ow, oh, ow, ow, you, ow, 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 ow. <laughs> can like... you imagine the, 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 they're doing the test right where they put the piece of heated copper wire in the blood and it's like, <laughs> oh, hang on, the Petri dish has dissolved. <laughs> and they eventually like figure out, like saying like, okay, we've done it. And they, they're putting the heated copper wire and it's like, oh yeah, but that's bubbling away and mounting. And then they put it and it doesn't bubble away and mount. It's like, oh, Oh, it's the thing, and then like suddenly it like turns around and it like morphs some mouths and starts eating them, or or just like the the thing tries tries to get into the alien and it just and it just dissolves in the alien blood and then like, that's the end of that one then. No, no, what they do is like they've got all the aliens tied up like in in the thing, right? Because like <laughs> until people know what the thing is, they have to like you know tie everyone up. And it's like an aliens versus predator where they use uh, steel netting, so they're like they're struggling against the bonds, and uh, the like the blood sort of seeping through until the ropes break because the acid dissolves it, and now the aliens all running around with like uh, rope burns on them. <laughs> By the way, aliens versus predator really shit film. Would not recommend it. Uh, yeah, uh, there's a reason I only ever watched it once on a pirate and never revisited it. I watched it again because it's like, well, you know, I'll have it on in the background, and I ended up just like scrolling on my phone instead. <laughs> uh, <sighs> so, Matcham's Bridge, just south of the eight, uh, uh, south of uh, it's it's Al Dash Cumbry because it's on the second line. So I thought it said the A one. So Matcham's Bridge, just south of Alcumbry. Oh, so it's sorry to interrupt you, but we got an important Ian update. So we've established that the thing and the ring are psychological horror, but what about the sting? <laughs> you don't want the sting. What, in the police? Yeah. Do you know he was called Sting because oh, he, he wore a stri stripy yeah. jumper? Oh, I thought he was called Sting because like, he bummed people in tantric sex and it would be stinging the day after. No, tantric sex is where you sit opposite each other and I don't have sex for four hours. Oh, that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. Sounds like my ex. <laughs> um, so, took its name from an infamous murder that took place there in the 18th century. Gervais Matcham robbed and killed a young drummer boy and went on the run for several years, spending time in the army and the navy. One night during a thunderstorm in Salisbury the Plain. What's that? In the army and the navy. Yeah, he couldn't he make his all mind over up, the so... place. He went in the army and the navy. Does he know Dennis Nielsen? <laughs> One night during a thunderstorm on Salisbury Plain, he encountered the ghost of the drummer boy and was forced to confess. He was tried and executed at Huntingdon and was gibbeted at the scene of the crime. The ragged well, corpse swung in its brutal. cage for another for many years. One freezing night, a group of lads drinking at the Brampton Hut dared one another to watch Matcham. To offer Matcham some hot broth to keep out the cold. The boy accepted the wager and climbing the ladder put the broth to the corpse's lips. As he did so, another youth hidden nearby sepulchrally whispered, Cool it, cool it. So great was the shock. The horrified boy fell off the ladder and was said to have been an idiot ever after. Some might say he was an idiot before he went up the ladder. <laughs> I like that e this sepulchral voice of call it. What a weird call use of sepulchre, isn't it? Sepulchre, yeah. Sepulchrally. Sepulchre. You know, coming from the sepulchre. It's not not as good as Faith, Faith Hill's use of centrifugal in the song This Kiss. I, what? <laughs> she, uses the, what? she uses the phrase centrifugal motion in uh, This Kiss by Faith Hill. She does. Listen to it. Oh, okay. Um, it's, um, that song <laughs> Can't Live, Live, Live Without You. So, uh, the foreigner hears it and goes, Ken Lee! Ken Lee! Do -do -do -do. Yeah, I like that. Ken Lee! Ken Live and Live <laughs> Oh, you too would watch Tarrant on TV. Yeah. Now, just for, 
for the viewers at home who, who are unfamiliar with the world in the before time, before we had YouTube or even the internet, there was this thing called Tarrant on TV. Well, and what it is is Clive Chris... James on TV. Do you remember Clive James on TV? I don't know. When he used to show clips of Endurance, the Japanese game show. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, I, 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 yeah, there was like the, hey, let's hold this tube with a cockroach in the middle and see who can blow, blow it into each other's mouth. <laughs> oh, that was something else. Yeah, can you still, are there clips of endurance on YouTube? I don't want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really don't want to see it. Yeah. Some of the country's most infamous witch trials also took place in that area. Just a few miles from Alconbury is the villager of War Boys. War Boys. War Boys. War Do Boys. That? Do you remember that one? Do you, Duran Duran one. Do you remember what it was called Mad Max, but it was actually about Imperator Furiosa? Oh. I like being bait and switched when I go and see a film. You're looking forward to Fur Furiosa, which is, says it's about Furiosa, but they're going to make it about Mad Max instead. Oh, that'll be all right. Yeah, I'll watch that. <laughs> Uh, da, 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 da. so anyway war boys where Sa alice samuel and her family were accused of witchcraft in the late 9th 16th, late 16th century they were tried at nearby huntingdon which a few decades later would also host matthew hopkins the witch finder general there was a film about him weren't there yeah oh well, yeah i mean uh there usually are films about witch finders hopkins. they're an interesting uh Hopkins is thought to have been responsible for the deaths of over 100 innocent people in his travels around East Anglia. I doubt oh, that. Oh, speaking of which, um, do you know when the Jack the Ripper murders took place? There was like It was over a three-year period. Oh, was it? Yeah, and coincidentally, the sort of years when the Jack Ripper things also happened to be like the years where Mahatma Gandhi was living in London. <laughs> I'm not saying... <laughs> I'm not saying the two events are related, but, you know, at the same time, Mahatma Gandhi was, was fond of sexually abusing uh, women. Well, he, he was also that, Hitler's I, pen pal, so you know he's a wrong one. Oh, well, they're both vegetarians, that's why. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Can't trust those vegetarians. Yeah, vacuous vegetarians. Yeah, amoral agnostics. <laughs> Incidentally, the Megatron would later be dubbed the Witch's Tit by locals due to its appearance. Uh, oh, cold as a Witch's Tit. Dry as Gandhi's flip flop. Um, from 1937, large swathes of farmland around the villages of Alconbury, Great Stukeley and Little Stukeley, were also required requisition to create an airfield for the RAF. <sighs> from. 1942, it was used by the USA, USAF, USAAF for bombing runs into Europe, beginning a relationship that would continue for many decades. The heavily populated base came to have, major, have a major effect on the local community, boasting many amenities that the area otherwise lacked. In the 1970s, several American... Witnesses reported seeing a werewolf-like creature inside the perimeter of the base. The hard stand monster, or the Beast of Alconbury, was witnessed in what is now the Monk's Wood Nature Reserve, and on at, least, me. on at least one occasion was fired upon. Look, it's a dog. Shoot it. Good old Yanks. Uh, oh well, you know how the, the, the like the best uh, dog killers they join the AGF. Better than, better than the Chinese. I'd be eating it in five seconds. <laughs> mm. uh, yeah, you... Hey, look, I brought dinner. You cook dinner. Uh, wouldn't... Look, look, I bet... Look, Haiti doesn't have this dog problem. You know, wild dog problem. Mm. Just saying. Doesn't really have a homeless problem, either. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. Uh, uh, <laughs> one of the most dramatic stories about the creature describes a crewman dying of fright trapped in his plane's cockpit overnight with claw marks later found on the canopy. No contemporary records of this story exist and it resembles a similar tale, similar tales the airmen might have heard while serving in West Germany. See the... Uh, Germany. The Moorback monster. So its authenticity is doubtful. Yeah, because... Um, 
yeah, army people are just they're just renowned for lying, just can't tell the truth, can they? Very unreliable witnesses are army yeah. people. Especially especially for UFO cases, like the <laughs> Um One account describes two sergeants on night patrol. As they approached the tower they came face to face with a hairy figure. Was it DLT? Um that's a reference for the kids there. Do you remember Dave Lee Travis, Hobbit? Do you remember Dave Lee Travis? <laughs> The hairy cornflake, they used to call him, didn't they? Why? I don't know. Because <laughs> he used to do the breakfast show, I think, and he had a beard. Oh, all right. Okay, yeah. Um, dogs stopped in their tracks, absolutely terrified, frank frantically trying to get away. The truck arrived just in time to see the creature, wherever it was, climbing over the security fence where it was last seen entering North Woods. One man, known only as Wes, said... I encountered a werewolf, for want of a better term, in England in 1970. I was... Should I do it in an American accent? I was 20 years old when I was stationed at RAF Alconbury. I was in a secure weapons storage area when I encountered it. It seemed shocked and surprised to have been caught off guard, and I froze in total fright. I was armed with a 38, and I never, I never once considered using it. There was no aggression on its part. Hello? I huh? could I could not <laughs> is, is that a reconstruction, is it, of it? I I'm not aggressive, I am. Bark. <laughs> Tom Tom said Operation U Tree remembers Dave Lee Travis. Allegedly, Dom. Oh, allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. True, true Wesley Cope says Wesley Coop says true story. I say allegedly. Um <laughs> 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 Um so yeah, I could not comprehend that I was what I was seeing. It wasn't. It's not human. It has a flat snout and large eye. So it's more like a flat a pug man then, is it, Hobbit? Pug man. Yeah, it's got a flat snout it's... and large eyes. Uh, its height is approximately five foot and weight approximately two hundred pound. Two hundred pound. It's very muscular and thin. It wore no clothing and was only moderately hairy, so it wasn't Dave Lee Travis then. It ran away on its hind legs and scurried over a chain link fence and ran deep into the dense wooded area ad adjacent to the base. I was extremely frightened, but the fear developed into a total commitment to trying to contact it again. I was obsessed with it. I was able to see it again a few weeks later at a distance in the wooded area. I watched it for about 30 seconds, slowly moving through the woods. Nick Redfern and Linda Godfrey have gone so far as to suggest a definite connection between werewolves and gone military installations based on you, numerous back, other You're examples. Back. You're back, Hemi. I'm back. You, yeah, you, you disconnected for about half a minute. Oh, did I? Uh, well, the, yeah. the audience will hear it. Um, basically, um, where did, where, what was the last thing you heard? Uh, David Lee Travis is cornflakes, but then you were saying some stuff about uh, the pug dog. Oh, I said yeah. I said I said it said he was it had a flat snout and large eyes. So I said it might be a pug man rather than a dog man. Yeah. Um. So anyway, the bloke saw it. He got obsessed with it. I bet. Um, Nick Redfern and Linda Godfrey have gone so far as to suggest a definite connection between werewolves and military installations, based on numerous other examples. What happened to all the shows where they were having werewolves and vampires and all that? Uh, I, I, th I think Twilight kind of ruined that, didn't it? There was Twilight, you had sparkly monsters. You had sparkly vampires and that just kind of like, yeah, we don't like... Yeah, vampires are a bit naff now, aren't they? Oh, they're, they're a bit oh, Yeah, they killed it, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I remember the good days of vampire films. Underworld, fucking, you know. Uh, near Dark. The mega, mega white thing. And then, obviously, they ruined Underworld by, like, yeah. the fifth one. That was atrocious. Oh it got God. a bit weird, didn't it? Yeah. That was a Where weird got... song, though. What? Lager, lager, white thing. Lager, lager, white thing. I don't think it was... It wasn't lager, they were saying. Shouting, lager, lager. What was that... It was Underworld. Oh, it was mega, mega city. white thing. It was mega, 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 mega white, white thing. thing. Yeah. Lager, lager, shouting mega, mega white thing. Mega, mega white thing. Mega, mega. 
Shouting lager, 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 shouting. Oh, that was a tune, wasn't it? Born Slippy, wasn't it? Mm. Um, it was very strange. Um, that other one kind of ruined it for me. The one, the one, we, the one in Trainspotting where the baby's crawling on the ceiling. Uh, good thing I never watched any of that because Is that dark I saw and the long. Bit... I think that's dark and long playing during that bit. You see, it's like Danny Boyle likes to have a scene where one of the actors is swimming through shit, and I was just like, "Yeah, no, I'll pass." Mm. Maybe you watched Shawshank Redemption. You thought, if I have a scene where they're swimming through shit, it will win me an Oscar. Mm. He took the wrong lessons from making an Oscar, but Oscar bait film. That's it. Uh, so others have drawn links between the Hard Stand Monster, the Hellhounds of Peterborough, mentioned in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle. Or East Anglia's Black Shuck. You know about Black Shuck, don't you, Abbott? The Phantom Hound. Did we cover it in a pre- previous 14 words? I don't words. Think done Phantom Dogs yet. Specifically, not Black Shuck. No. We should have done it with the Woodwows, really. Well, we can always go back to Strange Creatures of Europe and other places. Yeah. Strange, strange, <laughs> strange Creatures yep. of Yerp. 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 Um, yeah, so I've been to Yerp before. <laughs> uh. Huntington Sheer, yeah. Huntington Sheer did not escape the satanic panic of the nineteen eighties and early nineties. Yeah, do you do you remember that? Um, oh, was it? But Martin Preschool was or was all bollocks, wasn't it? And then the FBI dropped dropped the underground map. <laughs> do you remember that one? Uh, do you remember the? You, you ever heard the story of the? McMartin preschool where the kids Bird. kids kids say they were, they were taken down the toilets into the basement and and taken yeah, down tunnels. Yeah, allegations. That, I mean, a lot of that happens in like a lot of children go missing in the underground tunnels in Disneyland. It's like, well, why does Disneyland, which was built in virgin soil, have the underground tunnels? Oh, so the staff can go from one area of the park to the other without disturbing the guests, so they can keep the the magic alive. No, it's Hobbit's turn to go missing. Have I gone missing? Oh, looks. Uh, uh, that apparently that's it. Breaking apparently, up. people's uh, theme park experience would be ruined if they saw someone in a boiler suit with a yeah. tall box. Yeah. I'd, oh no, there's poor people here, and that just ruined me. Hmm. Oh look, that man is is making. Uh, he's, he's going on the Ferris wheel, making sure that the lights are working. Hmm. Ugh. Oh, look, there's a man tightening everything up, make sure it's all safe. Disgust. I disgust. I'm disgusted. Get my money back, I am. <laughs> um, yeah, so. Uh, and the, yeah, the Mar- yeah. do you remember the, the postscript to the Martin's preschool? That the, uh, that the no. FBI later accidentally revealed, revealed the ma- that they put out a load of files, but the map. The underground map for the pre- but Martin preschool that they'd found was released in with a load of other files, like uh, completely unrelated files. Uh, speaking of uh, pe- pedophiles, do you remember when uh, we had somebody who was going to guest on our show to talk about Dunblane Primary School? And he says he's got mm. so much evidence about it that he could talk for 10 hours on the subject and not... And still, like, go over it. It's like that would be an interesting thing to talk about. Mm. Like, why was it? It like to protect the families. That case has been sealed up for ninety nine years. Well, that that's the seal of um, something that's completely legit, isn't it? Yeah, that, that's the seal for, to say that allegedly nothing bad has happened here. Well, yeah, I mean, you don't you don't want to you don't want to find out that it's all a big conspiracy and your child was murdered in a in aid of. Uh, changing gun gun laws, so you might as well just you're probably better off just just hiding it all, so the parents like don't get upset much, that their children died. Of yeah. What was basically a load of bollocks. Have you been talking allegedly to Kate? Allegedly, that was alleged. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> alleged. Uh, so evangelical evangelical group, the Reach Out Trust, claimed that occult activities had increased locally. By fifty percent between nineteen eighty and nineteen ninety, Huntingdon being particularly affected, one of their concerns was the influence of the burgeoning home video market. In nineteen ninety, the group's oh, area nasty. director. Oh no, video nasty, nasty video. Have we got a video? Got a video nasty. I still haven't seen Driller Killer. Is that a real film? 
Driller Killer is hilarious. Uh, Driller Killer is hilarious, hilarious just purely for the setup because this was a time that you didn't have cordless drills. So the start of it is oh. like a bit... So you've got a bit of gear porn at the start where the bloke's making himself a, a, a portable drill. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's, I don't know. You might you might like it just purely for the for the gear porn part at the start where he makes himself a portable drill. I was, I was watching a video on the Chinese uh, spying website the other day, Chinktok, and it was like it had this man and he was building like a, a garden streamer because he was unsatisfied with how ineffective his garden streamer was. Yeah. So he gets the engine from a chainsaw and uses that. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I love videos. With sort of, it's like the best bit in the A-Team was, was when uh, they build a, a doodad to build the thing. That's why I should watch MacGyver. Have we got, have we got anywhere story... to lock up the A-Team? How about the shed with all the welding tools and, and sheet metal and, and, a, and yeah, a car? Yeah, that sounds like a secure <laughs> place to put them in. Are we going to cuff them? Nah, they'll be fine. We'll just lock the door. Yeah. I mean, what more do you want? Uh, you can go in the staff tunnels at Nuka World in Fallout 4. It's full of ghouls, apparently, I bet. Yes. Other Fallouts are available, including the TV series, which where they've decided they're not going to service the fans at all. So what? So what they want to do is immediately discount a group of people who are definitely going to watch it, because that's what uh, that's what you do when you make when you make it make a piece of media. You want to discount as many people as possible before you even start the series, don't you? Oh right, discount right. I'm just I didn't quite understand the context of using discount there. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, what is it? Because it's not just the director of Fallout, but it's like you get these producers going, well, we like this IP and we see they've got a big fan base there. So uh, we need to find a director who hates the fans of the fan base and wants to make something that's nothing like it. Yeah. And also it's not going to read the law. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the, yeah, you'll do. Uh, we're, we're making Lord of the Rings. And the first thing we want to do is make sure that Lord of the Rings fans don't want to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay fair enough if you think you're going to make money that way uh so uh, tony... you're racist for not watching it yeah so in 1990 the group's area director tony Sargent said we're finding that children as young as eight are meddling in the occult ah you kids meddling in the occult uh and those in rural areas it's soon become bored so to... sex, it's just that kids are playing with ouija balls and that's the problem so kids in rural areas without video shops are becoming bored and turn into videos. Um, he didn't say that. I just added that bit. But, but if they're in your rural areas, I don't think there's going to be many video shops. So how are they turning into videos? Um, are your kids consuming VHS nasties? Yes. Um, but even more disturbing is the evidence that we found in, uh, in at least one local play to play playground of children playing, what are they playing, Hob Hobbit? Oh, Hopscotch. Levitation, where they use their mind power to lift someone off of the ground. <laughs> hey, wasn't that David Blaine's bit? Like, hey, Have you know, did hey, you know we used hey, to play hey, Levitation at school? I did. David Blaine, what in Fallout? Fraser. Fraser, do you remember that playground game of Levitation? Yeah. Did you used to play that? No. I don't think so. <laughs> Did you, not all stand, did you not all stand around one person and try and lift them off the ground with using your mind power? Like, I remember that game. That was no. good. No, that must have been an 80s thing. That's when you're all like, <laughs> fucking psychedelics. Like, we right, we so played Dan Touch the Floor. It's, it's yeah. lava. <laughs> Just, we'll lift our mate up with our minds. Yeah, because that's something that kids do. <laughs> I could, it's just, the thing is, though, when you're coming out with stuff as preposterous as... Like, that's his turd in the punch bowl, isn't it? He's like... He's like going, I'm, I'm not quite sure about some of the stuff that's on telly at the moment. It's starting to get a little bit satanic. To which you go, you know what? Maybe mm, there is I a bit too much violence on TV these days. And may, may, maybe EastEnders. May, maybe uh. EastEnders does come from the devil. But then he starts going, ah, these kids and they're trying to lift lift their mates up using using the power of their mind. It's like, and it's like, okay, this bloke's a crank. Uh, according to I mean... That 
Go on then. Hey, I mean, all he has to do is find one kid that does that, and you know he's he's <laughs> right. You know, <laughs> Pro- myth proven. Um, according to several yeah. people who went to school in the area, this was nothing more than the levitation game, also called light as a feather, stiff as a board, in which if a group of eight children or so would lift each- lift another off the ground. Their combined strength making the person feel as light as a feather. Oh, is that the one where you lie down and like two people hold your hands and then you kick up and they, they hold in your arms so that you go flying? I don't know. Was that a game that you played then? <laughs> it, it, it was it was called Lift Off. I can understand I understand. Yeah, Wesley's talking about that. Yeah. Wes- Wesley's right. He's talking about that, like, quote unquote, it's magic trick where one person sits in a chair and four people stand around them, putting two fingers under each armpit and two fingers under each knee and lift them up. Do you remember that one? But don't you have to push oh, down yeah, on the red actually, first? Yeah. Don't you, like, push mm. down on their head first to make them. I, I don't know. I, I, I do know what. I do kind of know what he's talking about. Is that what you about. did, Tammy? Is that what you did? Yeah. <laughs> So, um, so this guy isn't bullshitting then, you know, fucking fact, fact proven or whatever, like yeah. myth the, unbusted. Myth busted. The county council carried out its own investigation of ritual activity in 1980 and found very little cause for concern. Well, of course, because the bloke at the council is the fucking mm. grand wizard, isn't he, of the local Satan fucking worshipping. <laughs> we, know po- we know what politicians are like with kids, don't we? <laughs> allegedly 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 yeah i don't know probably yeah. some of it's actually um <laughs> only once and if you're in a labor and ball, you know. public record <laughs> like um yeah Teeth. well we'll say jeffrey epstein yeah. but he didn't he, he didn't traffic anybody to anybody did he no it was just a strange thing i don't know why he ended up in prison because did he do anything wrong i'm not sure no uh RAF- Alconbury continued to be important throughout the Cold War and Operation Desert Storm. It was home to a nuclear bun- bunker nicknamed the Magic Mountain, tours of which are now available to visitors. Has anybody ever seen the um, brown signs that say secret nuclear bunker this way? Uh, yeah, it's in Essex somewhere, isn't it? I, I saw it. There's a well, they're saying channel, is, it there's one in Alconbury as well that you can go around. Oh, okay. Uh, in its day, this bunker acted as a communications hub for TR-1 reconnaissance craft, better known as the U-2 spy plane. Um, the presence of nuclear weapons at Alconbury has been suggested as a possible explanation for numerous UFO sightings near the base, although military aircraft, secret otherwise, must be possible cul- culprits. As early as 1950, ufologist Donald Kehoe suggested that, UF- that UFOs were drawn to Earth due to the development of the atomic bomb. Many contactee- t- contactees have relayed messages about the need for nuclear disarmament and world peace before humanity can be accepted by the extraterrestrial community. Or Remember Hobbit, when we used to be called mankind? Or Hobbit, nuclear weapons testing ripped a hole that demons could come through. Yep, I believe that. Yeah. Hmm. Uh... Peterborough res- reg- red- resident Paul Satchel always got a bag on him um, reported seeing a triangular UFO moving in the direction of Aria Falconbury uh, on a clear dark evening in the in the late 1980s he was walking with a friend in Peterborough they looked up when they saw lights in the sky at first they thought it was a helicopter but it made no noise Mr Satchel described the craft as a black triangle with white lights at each corner and pulsing red light in the centre. Um, triangle UFOs, what do you think they are? I have heard numerous people say... Oh, a bit's gone. Got to wait for him to return. Um, thing. Oh, Hello? didn't hear any of that, a bit. <laughs> right, yeah. I've heard numerous Both people lagging. say... <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's just be- all right. You want me to talk about secret nu- nuclear uh, military aircraft? Yeah, okay. I'll just be shame if I lose my connection. <laughs> uh, the, the the military aircraft, or maybe their spacefaring, they use anti gravity drives, which are electromagnetic in in uh, or, operation. Or they're just full of bees' wings. 
Oh yeah, they could oh, be guts. like a... they're full of bee guts, aren't they? I bet. That's, uh, yeah. They got bee guts on each corner. Oh, it's gone again. Well, they back. glow, don't they? What bee guts? Uh, no, the, these so these triangle things. They they got glow in the corners. Their 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 engines are incandescent. Yeah. They must get hot during operation. Dom said Obit keeps glitching. He's clearly an NPC. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm an Eritrean. I'm an NPC. I seem to be all these things. <laughs> my YouTube trolls are just jealous I was, of my I was success. a member of, a ro of the royal family until I took a, took a spear to the knee. That's it. <laughs> well, you've been spear choking, have you? That's what Kate said. She said, I, was, yep. I, too, I too was a member of the royal family until I, I took a shotgun to the head, uh, allegedly. Um, Mr. Satchel described the craft as, craft as a black triangle with white lights at each corner and a pulsing red light in the centre. He judged it to be a few hundred feet above the houses and moving slowly, oh, slowly southwards. So, so how do you... Okay, then. So... You've got a flat triangle, got anti grav drives. How do you how do you, how do you go forward? Because the lights are all pointing down. Do you have to tilt forward so, like a helicopter? Yeah, and that's why you got three of them, so you can just sort of tilt them in various ways to move one way or the other. Ah, uh, okay, fair enough. That makes. And they've probably got like gyroscopes in there as well. I mean, gyroscopes are anti gravity. I mean, what what about that monorail? I should not mon. Yeah, yeah, it was a monorail. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's weird. But gyroscopes... That's it. I was going to buy a gyroscope just to sort of, like, play with it. Um, it seemed to emit no sound of its own, but there was a strange electrical hum in the air. The object then moved rapidly towards the east and disappeared. The whole incident lasted less than a minute. He suggested it might have been an experimental stealth aircraft. Um, I think... Do you think triangles are likely to be... Um, Earth from Earth, not spread, yeah, not you. Not well, I believe UFOs. all of these. I believe all these UFOs or wet ass uh, UFOs. Well, they're all wet ass uh, waps because they come from yeah. the sea. Yeah, <laughs> waps. Oh, right. oh, so you don't believe it? You're not. Then they're not. They don't come out of dumbs. Then they come out of sums. <laughs> I don't uh, know. Dumbs, sums, yeah. Submerged underground basis. I don't know. Yeah. Um, is it? Would that be a sum? Yeah, a submerged underground military base. Adam King related an even closer encounter to me in the spring of 1994. He and his girlfriend were in the village of Glatton when they saw five or six red orbs in the sky. They hovered momentarily in front of the car. Two orbs then sped towards each other and flew off in different directions. There followed a complex display from the objects which seemingly put on a show for the couple. Then they appeared to land behind some trees 50 metres away, at which point Adam became scared and drove off. Five minutes later, he returned to the same spot to find the objects gone. So he was shitting himself, but he came back later because he was fine after he'd shit himself. Mm. At some yeah, point, the couple fun. noticed they were missing time, 50 minutes passing in what felt like a few minutes. King later went underwent, underwent hypnotic regression and recalled going aboard a craft manned by the usual greys. He declined to go into more detail about this part of the experience, anal probe. He got anal probe, didn't he? Yep. Oh, he got an anal probe. Yeah. Uh, why, why is it in this episode there's always something going in or coming out of Mr. King's butt, Adam King's butt? Give me that butt. <laughs> Give me that butt. Give me that butt. Give me that butt. I love human butts and I can't lie. <laughs> um, well, you other problems can't deny. <laughs> uh, one of the most unexpected stories about the Megatron was re related to me by local man Terry Pinner, who came forward out of the blue and told of an exorcism aboard the spaceship in the early 1990s. At that time, staff, at staff had started to refuse to work evenings. They said that knocking sounds came from the walls, objects moved by themselves, and cups and saucers flew through the air. Flying saucer on a flying saucer, Hobbit. Uh, was it HP sauce? 
Uh, Megatron's okay. owner, Dan- Danny Blundell, was sceptical at first, but one night when he stayed to ca- stayed late to catch up on some paperwork, he heard footsteps following him. Terry Pinner was f- familiar with local history. He'd grown up in the area. His father's farmland becoming part of the new airfield in the 1930s. He recalled that the Mel- Megatron site lay on what used to be a road leading to a temporary mortuary at R- RAF Alconbury, an idea that seems to be confirmed by old maps. In 1943, a tragic accident took place when the 95th bomb group were loading bombs onto a B-17 flying fortress. One of the bombs detonated, killing 19 men and injuring a further 21. Mr. Pinner suspected that the poltergeist activity in the diner was the result of restless spirits whose last journey had been along this road. He offered to connect Danny Blundell to someone who could free these lost souls. He... I had little hope of finding those involved in the exorcism, more properly called a blessing, as it involved a place rather than a person. Since 1975, every Anglican diocese has spiritual deliverance teams trained in both mental health and religious ritual, but their actions are usually kept strictly confidential, even the identities of the practitioners being difficult to ascertain. The same applies to the Roman Catholic Church. I contacted churches of every denomination, as well as Francis Young, historian and folklorist at Cambridge University, and Darren Mann, who runs the online paranormal database. Despite their help, the trail seems to run cold. That was until Kim Robinson, president of Huntingdon Spiritualist Church, came forward to say that they were the ones involved in the exorcism. A medium from the church said that the Megatron had an unsettling atmosphere. She believed that several ley lines converged on the site, echoing the convergence of roads in the vicinity. The medium also said that she in, she encountered the spirit of a man whose clothes were two centuries out of date. He told her to go away quickly as it's not a good place to be. According to Mr. Pinner, the phenomena ceased immediately after the spiritualists visited the premises. Incidentally, Rob Clapperton, he performed as a robot at the Meg- Megatron in the early 90s. Oh, it still works. What? I've, I've just had my fire... It's just uh, sparked into life. It's got warm enough. I, I put something. I'll tell you off the air because it's very exciting. <laughs> he um, went on to become a paranormal <laughs> investigator and psychic medium himself. I had the pleasure of accompanying him on a ghost hunt and listening to his recordings of electronic voice phenomena. Rob still performs as a robot at events around the country and makes his, all his own costumes. We have raised the idea of going back to the Me- Megatron site to investigate. The Megatron was not to last as an independent business. Large overheads and dwindling sales led to its closure in 1992 after just two years of operation. In 1993, it reopened as a McDonald's with most of its unique features stripped out. It closed for the last time in 2000 and lay derelict for several years. In 2008, attempts to have the building listed seemed to have led to it being hastily bulldozed instead of blatant acts of cultural vandalism. The site now hosts a self-storage business, the foundations of the Megatron still visible under the shipping containers. As for RAF Alconbury, it, it was slowly wound down uh, wound down from the mid-90s and was sold to developers in 2009. It's now home to the Alconbury Weald housing development and New Shire Hall, the new headquarters for Cambridgeshire County Council. More interesting, interestingly for us, the former airfield is also home to the East Anglian Astrophysical Research Organisation, IARO, which monitors meteor activity in our atmosphere and plans to build the UK's first permanent SETI, Search for extraterri- Extraterrestrial Intelligence Facility. That's what the extra testicle. Um, it, or or stupid, invest- stu- stupid, silly excuse to investigate as... Uh, Ron Mars uh-huh, uh-huh. after the demise of the Megatron Danny Danny Blundell continued to work on various business ventures leading to an amusing run running with the BBC in 2001 Manhattan Corporation a company Danny ran alongside Sandra Merrington released a van come motor home that had been specially adapted van to create Cumber a more home. spacious interior of course, they called this vehicle the Manhattan TARDIS. The following year, the BBC People attempted to block their trademark they? application. What's that, Hobbit? 
Well, it's 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 one of those things like Summa Cum Laude, the the motorhome yeah. come work office. Van Cum Van Cum Motorhome. Yeah. Van uh, Cum Motorhome. The following Van year, the BBC, yeah. In their defence, Manhattan Corporation argued they were in a different line of business to the BBC. They also argued they had come come to their acronym by a different route. TARDIS standing for Touring and Recreational Driving in Safety. <laughs> this, yes. this cheeky tactic worked in Manhattan's favour and they were able to continue using the name. Only a small number of the vans were actually produced. So snap one up while you can. Mm. Uh, oh, so why did so why did so many strange events seem to happen in and around Alconbury? Uh can it really be put down to conversions of supposed ley lines I suspect, I suspect one factor is its position in the centre of the country which in which many travellers passing through on their way to other destinations the two most likely places to witness ghosts and other ent- entities are in bed and on on long car journeys. These are times when one is likely to experience hypnogogic hallucinations, dream Im- dream imagery combining in re- with reality in transitional state between wake- wakefulness and sleep. They just fucking hate it a bit when when you're driving your car and there's fucking nuns, there's nuns, UFOs, uh, dogmen all in your fucking way while you're trying to drive. They just hate that a bit. Happens all the time. Yeah. Yeah, fucking. If I see one more fucking ghost nun while I'm driving, I'm gonna fucking scream, mate. Yeah. I tell you, I'm tired of these ghost motherfucking nun. ghost nuns and my motherfucking <laughs> something. <laughs> I love the way there's this one explanation and they just blanket it for everything, don't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you're in bed and you've got the fucking dog man over and he wants and he wants a drink of water, so you got to take him downstairs. Oh, you know, it's the Fata Morgana. Yeah, yeah. Um, the state between wakefulness Again, like and sleep. Said, there, ain't, there, ain't, there ain't no dog men in China, let's just say that. Yeah, not anymore, there ain't. Um, hypno- oh, dog hyp- men are hypno- we like them. Have you ever, hip- ever heard of Hypnopompia? It's the state one goes through when waking up. You know when you're waking up and there's just fucking ghosts galore, like your bedroom's fucking... You can barely get to the door because it's full of ghosts. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, it's a com- common issue. You, it's full I of mean, ghosts, well, vampires, dogmen. You know, you know, you never see ghosts interacting with each other, do you? So... I don't know. I've never seen more than one ghost. <laughs> Dude, no, you're right. I've never heard of ghosts interacting with one another. What? What's up with that, then? <laughs> yeah, like exactly. You know, it's... A, yeah, exactly. It only seems to be one ghost per property, right? You know, it's like a lease or something. Uh, yeah. You can this... only have one ghost here. Uh, this this wrap up's not that interesting. So he just goes on about you know, oh, right. they just hate it when you drive and there's ghosts all over the place. Um, so then they start because because they're making a film about about the um about the restaurant. And it's uh, the this this paragraph here is probably the last one I'll read. It says, "The Megatron also reflects the time and place of its birth. It represents a very British future, one that combines space age optimism with mundane realities of British life, and glimpses of com- contemporary pop culture." One man remembers stopping off for breakfast in the early nineties, still tripping from the previous night's rave. Ultimately, everyday people are at the heart of the Megatron story. Um, yeah, it's that. The, that's what I find so interesting about it. It's like very, it's a very, very British thing, isn't it? Yeah. And it was like that optimistic time. You know, you remember like Hobbit's a big fan of um, Tomorrow's World like I was. And that, that optimistic yeah. space age. Yeah. Everyone's yeah, yeah. going to be wearing, wearing suits, uh, suits and watching. Um, oh, this is cars. something I, I did a stream earlier when i was playing planetary annihilation i was talking about june and i said i'll i'll do a a let's play of the the best june game which is from 1992 by cryo Hmm. and i was saying that is probably the best adaptation i've seen of june because it's uh it's hopeful and it's optimistic and even the fremen who in the books are you know quite dangerous and not quite quite murderous in the game that they're quite helpful it's like Ah, oh, Paul, you can talk to us now. That's great. Uh, you, you, um, 
your visions increase and uh, the, the the water of life does feature it in it as well and it translates into the game where you can telepathically communicate well, with the, any uh, fremen on the planet even the lynch one's quite optimistic isn't it I tell you what, the Lynch one did far more to like show like, oh, did you know that um, the Baron is a gay pederast? But they did it with like pulling up the heart plugs from the boys. Yeah, they didn't do that in June. They they just completely brushed over that um, he's a proud um, voice for for the Quas. <laughs> they, they just seem to be. He's a, he's a proud. He's a proud uh, LGBT ally, isn't he? I'm hoping when Pink News does like strong, independent, powerful. Oh, apparently, the uh, Daily Mash today they're saying, "Why, why do you never see ghosts in shell suits?" Mm. Mm. Yeah, they they all seem to be like certain, like they all seem to be is Elizabethan, don't they? Yeah, but I I I do kind of wonder, like, do you see ghosts on the daily, but you don't notice them because they're not. That's there? what. I'm yeah. yeah, yeah, for mine. Oh, yeah, like that, that guy is, uh, who was at the side of the no, road no, and they're saying you go into a fancy dress. And he's like, oh, I, I need, um, you know, petrol. Hello. So the bloke, you could even smell the petrol on the bloke, couldn't he? Yeah. Mm. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I've spoken to a few people, like you know, working in like care homes, have seen ghosts, and they're just like normal people. But it's only after they, you know, been told by the the other staff that they're dead. You know that that woman passed on a few days ago kind of thing, you know, while they were on their break. You know, days off. I uh, passed on a strange phrase. Do you want to uh, whip through this daily mash that, that Dom shared with us? Um, what is it? It's unanswered supernatural questions. Why do you never see ghosts in shell suit? We just got over okay. that. Well. <laughs> Surely it's just as likely you'd see a ghost dressed in a melted shell suit who's been run over by a car as a grey lady in Victorian dress who particularly predictably dried, died of consumption. Why are pol poltergeists so boringly domestic? Ghosts should be exciting. Why are so many found doing tedious stuff in people's homes like empty? What do you cupboards? mean by poltergeists should be boringly domestic? What, Said, why what do are they? So why are they emptying cupboards and stuff? But they're not. Like Some of them are literally not... like uh, teleporting stuff, aren't they? That Yeah, well... I mean, what, what what do you want the polar guys to do? Fucking do calculus. Yeah, <laughs> do your taxes or something. What do you want? Yeah, to yeah, do? fill fucking... in my tax form. That'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, fucking the, the missing case of of the poltergeist that tidied up my house when I was asleep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Fuck, why would oh, what, a spook what? has been in here and he's gone and uh, tidied up all my sheets and neatly folded my laundry. No, no, Hobbit, that's a racist. Stereotype language. I was spooked by the laundry folding. <laughs> a spook. I never a, see a, them. A spook, a spook, spook. is a, is a, is a race, racial slur. All right. But you so, so, <laughs> so, so, what, what are the other ones? You're telling me ghosts is a racial slur? What against the departed? No, spook. No. spook is. <laughs> I don't get it. Spook is like the the N word for ghosts, you know. Yeah. No, a spook. What? A spook is another word for an N word. No, it's not. It's a word for a ghost. <laughs> I'm trying to gaslight me. I'm not gaslighting <laughs> I don't it's, believe. It's very you. offensive to ghosts. Yeah, so ghosts talking about dead. spooks coming yeah. in and and emptying the emptying your cupboards like it's not on. Well, am I am I so <laughs> am I supposed to say the mortally challenged? <laughs> oh no, no, people of mortality. No, I'm saying spook specifically uh, targets uh, minority. I, I'm you know? genu I'm genuinely surprised. Like I thought, I was pretty hot on racial slurs, and I've <laughs> never heard like that one. Being you haven't. One. Oh no. Hey, um, did you know in in America they considered Oriental to be a racial slur? Why well, they're not? You can't English. refer to ghosts as Orientals. Um. So anyway, moving moving off of racism, why would lights in the sky be anything it's other than ghosts. airplanes, Hobbit? Oh, I'm so sorry that I, if any ghosts are listening to me right now, I I do apologise. Hobbit, why would lights in yeah. the sky be anything other than airplanes? The only lights in the sky are aeroplanes. Well, what about stars? The only lights in the sky. How can they be anything <laughs> other than aeroplanes, Hobbit? Uh, <laughs> ah, what if it's the ISS? 
The why would lights in the sky be anything other than aeroplanes? I don't know. <laughs> oh, wouldn't. is it a rhetorical? <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. They wouldn't. The only lights in the sky are aeroplanes. The only lights <laughs> in the sky. That according, explains according so much. According to this unfunny fucking idiot from the Daily Mash. I, I can't. I can't wait until um. What's his name? I, I, I'm. I next time Stephen J. James comes around for Sunday roast, I've got a ton of that. Yeah. Uh, so let, let's hear the really unfunny bit. If you see a light in the sky, the most ex- likely explanation is it's an aeroplane. I would have thought it'd be a star or the moon. But isn't I'm not, it just? A I'm not as fucking clever as someone from the Daily Mash who's been to university. Yeah. Oh, what is it? Got a degree in journalism? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Um, you, you, it makes sense now, you know all those, all those, all those twinkles in in the night sky. They're actually aeroplanes. It's all, all airplanes. That's yeah. There's airplanes. That, millions yeah. of them. Um, exactly. No. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, they're baffling. So okay. Ah, but the paranormal fa- fans say it wasn't moving in the right way. Baffling, unless you consider otherworldly possibilities like a fucking helicopter or a drone. Uh, w- or yeah. stars, or the moon, or Jupiter. Is this guy? Is this guy a comedian? Like for probably he thinks Netflix. he is. There are much yeah. simpler explanations than an alien spaceship reconnoitering Cheem before de- vanishing into another dimension. Well, actually, <laughs> it's, oh, why does a cold draft need further explanation? A frequently reported effect of a ghostly presence is suddenly feeling a cold draft. Given we live in a bloody freezing country full of poorly insulated homes and we can't afford to put the heating on because of the fucking Tories. Oh, no, I, I just... This guy sounds like now. Phil. Yeah. This, this sounds like Phil. It's, I'm sorry, it, but... It's, it's no it's wonder people... It's Phil and you. For no apparent you. reason. Is this guy a contrarian as well? He, he, could have at least, <laughs> he could have at least blamed the Tories. I, I, I thought he could have done that. Tories, am I right? Uh, fucking Tories, am I right? Boris Johnson, fuck him. Yeah. Um, why haven't aliens made contact? David Some people Cameron. think extraterrestrial life forms won't visit Earth until a point in human history when things have got so mm. bad we need an intervention. But if we aren't there now with our current mess, how awful does it need to get? Maybe they've maybe they're already, already been and just as just, just as be fucked and pissed off again because of the goddamn Tories. Am I right? Yeah. Uh that that got really bad at the end. Who fucking wrote this? Tripe. To be fair, kudos to this bloke for not putting his own name on it. Uh, it because <laughs> I it. fucking wouldn't. Yeah. No, absolutely no nobody is claiming that article. <laughs> and for good reason. Oh yeah, that's why I'm glad I don't read news articles anymore because I try to find like where if the uh, journalist is on Twitter, so I can say, "Can you explain this article to me, please?" Well, you know, can you? Did you ever get an answer about the gradients? No, no. Maybe somebody else can do it. <laughs> Degree, lol. Says living the dream. Fucking degrees. Spedwest says we were promised jetpacks. Do you remember that? When every other fucker was wearing a jetpack in the 80s and we were like, yes, we're going to get jetpacks in 20 years. What happened? Fuck all. <laughs> oh, uh, it turns out the fuel for jetpacks is, is really expensive and it's got like a range of 20 miles or something. Uh, 20 seconds, sorry. Um, do you want an do you want an unexplained mysteries? We've got another five five or so minutes. Yeah. Oh, uh, speaking of which. Oh shit! Have you ever um, seen this one? A bit in this vintage clip, BBC astronomer Sir Patrick Moore speaks to a man who says he can speak Venusian. No. Uh, hold on. Let's. Speak Venusian. What, yeah. as in like from, from Venice? Venus. No, Venus. Not or Venus. Not Venice. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wait, that's not hard. Like, you just speak Italian. <laughs> I know. 
<laughs> Fraser's got the wrong end of the stick. <laughs> right, here we go. Can you speak for Oh, we'll probably get a fucking strike from the BBC. Oh, fuck that. Oh. <laughs> uh, so we did. So we actually had this dude on the on the um, on, on the sky at night talking about speaking Venusian. Uh, let's let's put a bit of this on. I'll probably. <laughs> What does that mean, actually? That means how are all you? I am very pleased to see you. This afternoon. How <laughs> <laughs> so was that Venusian or what? not? Wait, what? Uh, oh yeah, that was just... uh, I'm. I'm hoping he'll he'll write a dictionary um, and show the alphabet of the Venusians. <laughs> yeah, could you write that down for me, please? <laughs> Is there a written version of we can use? Mm. Man guilty of using cloned animal parts to create giant Franken sheep. That's not not real. Now, do you remember there is a an American program called Unexplained Mysteries? Yes, with um, and they had this did really good theme tune. It? Uh, was he? Oh. Um, no, that was in search of, wasn't it, with Spock? Uh, yeah, no. Um, oh, have, you, have you seen the Iron Lung die? Died the Iron Lung guy died. Yeah, yeah, I saw, I saw that. Yeah. Looks like Alan Brazil. Sad. It's fucking weird. <laughs> I do struggle with uh, with breathing on my own. <laughs> you look, it, it looks uh, like the guy from the North FC meme, did not he? You know, he looks like if I don't know if you've ever seen that Alan Brazil. Do you remember? Do you remember I played the clip? Can you, know, you I do, um? I do struggle with those Greek, Greek names. That's what Alan Brazil looks like. I, I posted it in general. Can can you? We've got an official uh, unsolved mysteries um, uh, video. It's a minute long, and I thought it'd be a good thing we could, we I'm could not play out on that. It's got Cobra in it. Oh come on! It's unexplained mysteries. Unsolved, unsolved mysteries. mysteries. Yeah, unsolved mysteries. Why? Why is Cobra's room so fucking dirty? That's not a mystery. No, no. It's 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 a, it's the spooky story of the Casper ghost. It's safe for YouTube. Uh, right. Okay. So. Sassy oh, audience, you're in, for, audience, you're in for a treat. Oh, this this not. is... You're in for something disgusting. This is a labour of love. On April 24th, 2023, famous YouTuber Joshua Faye Saunders, known as King Cobra JFS, took possession of a bearded dragon named Puff from his registered sex oh, offender no, neighbour no, called no, no, Homeboy no. Ethan. After he was found violating his parole and sent back to prison... Six full months pass, and by all appearances, the reptile was being well taken care of by Josh. Until tragedy struck on November 14th, Puff went missing. Josh and his legion of fangs claim trolls are responsible, although some believe that King Cobra JFS is behind it all. For every mystery, there is someone, somewhere, who knows the truth. Perhaps that someone is watching. Perhaps it's you. Join me. That theme tune is brilliant. Why have you made us watch the disgusting Goblin Man? Well, it's 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 the unsolved mystery of Wyoming. Like, how does this creature stay alive? What the? F how the fuck does a, a, a fucking iron lungs? How do they work? And what's happened to them? Why have they kind of? They just let people die now, so they can harvest their organs. That's quite simple. Maybe they replaced it with intubation, but iron lungs don't see. It. How are you supposed to pee in your in that machine? Don't matter. You ain't clearing it up, are you? I suppose not. Still, he looks happy though, doesn't he? Oh, I'm dead. I'm dead happy inside this. I am. You saw him, sir. Oh, just love her. Poos. Doesn't need to move. Oh. The nurse has to clean it up. I don't have to do any of that point of her. Oh, it's pretty good. No, it must be quite hard, though, mustn't it? If you're laying on your back all the time. How do you stop getting bed sores? 
I don't know. I was, is it? Di- it'd be different in an iron lung. What's in? What's in? In the? How's, what's your body doing inside the iron lung? I assume what it does is it's a vacuum pump and it's sealed. So uh, when it pulls, it makes your chest and your your stomach swell. Yeah. So it keeps your lungs going. Yeah. Oh, have you seen? There's a there's a Welsh Welsh monolith now. Oh, is there boy? Oh, you did you know this? The one that appeared in Utah in 2020. No, yeah. I didn't. But I, I heard that there... now. There's one in Wales. Oh, aye, aye. Uh, there's one in, been one in Romania that probably got nicked. Um, there's one in the Isle of Wight, Utah, and California. Utah. 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 Vavu. Uh, where did the idea that witches fly on broomsticks originate? I don't know. Probably like the only thing he's done which I liked. Uh, no, the smell of Reeves and Mortimer was funny. Hello. It's I'm, like. I'm, I'm you, you know how Gordon, the gorgeous sandy haired Labrador. You're not seeing him. You, you know how most people are repulsed by the sight of uh, King Cobra? Yeah. I have the same visceral disgust whenever I see Vic Reeves. Oh, that's a shame. And You're it, missing some really good Vic Reeves stuff. Uh, and I, I know it's like, you know, I'm sure they're like reasonable people and he seems to be able to take care of himself, unlike Cobra, but I just, oh no. Do you want to know about I the huge want... meat-eating dinosaur that was the heron from hell? Oh, sorry. Just when you say that, I, j- I keep thinking like neighbours from hell. Huh. Researchers have solved the mystery of whether or not the Spinosaurus was adept at pursuing its prey underwater. Spinosaurus. Yeah. Really. Yeah. They're saying it was a swimmer. I mean, next they'll be saying, "Oh, we came up with this uh, a dinosaur that's got poor eyesight. We call it a do you thinkysaurus." Oh, uh, well, that's, uh, yeah. Oh, stem cell breakthrough. Uh, mammoths. Do you remember we did the big mammoth episode? Oh, yeah, mammoth balls, yeah. Mammoth testicles. <laughs> oh, sweet and sour mammoth balls. Yeah, I like that. Good yeah. good choice. Uh, million, year, million year mammoth ball. You want million, million year man, mammoth ball, Hobbit? Oh, yeah. Me have uh, hoisin sauce with that. Thank you. <laughs> uh... So, de-extinction might seem like science fiction from now, and it always works out well, doesn't it, Hobbit? I'm afraid. There's mm-hmm. never any unintended consequences Just in not, bringing back... Jurassic, Jurassic Park was a documentary. Yeah. yeah. Jurassic Park yeah. was 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 the ultimate, like, you really should do this. That, that, you, if there's one takeaway from Jurassic Park, it's, yeah, we should do this. Have you ever read the book? <laughs> No. So I tell you what, Michael Crichton. Oh, Mike. Well, you enjoy reading books. Read Michael mm. Crichton because back when I used to read, uh, yeah, I I noticed like, wow, this guy puts citations and footnotes in everything. <laughs> He's brilliant. The guy was a genius. <laughs> the problem was he was a bit of a uh, no because there's only two films that in, that are basically the same film, aren't there? Um, Jurassic Park and Westworld are the same film, aren't they? Same book. Oh, the <laughs> problem is he wasn't something, and then I lost my internet connection. Oh, yes. I, I, I said I said the uh, Westworld and Jurassic Park are basically the same film. Uh, yeah, but like, um, is Westworld by Michael Crichton? Because yeah. I, 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 is it? Yeah. yeah, I don't think I read that then. No. Yeah, that's one. No, I was reading things like State of Fear, Next, and Contagion, and Sphere. Uh, the Andromeda Strain. That was great. Uh, oh, it's it was really Sphere, good. Sphere is some sort of sequel to the, of Andromeda Strain. Oh, okay. Um, don't know if that's by Michael Crichton. No, I'll have to reread this stuff because yeah. they're so good. It's it's they're worth a reread probably. So to predict, uh, long story short, to produce an actual live mammoth. The team will ultimately need to combine the cells with genes taken from a mammoth that has been found frozen and well preserved in the permafrost. 
I haven't been able to find it again. Point. I told you, I found one where they found sperm in it. Are they, are they going to have to do that thing where they get like a, an elephant and a pig drunk and then have Isaac Case play like love songs? <laughs> no, they. Uh, you know they're going to do it. They're going to do Man Bear Mammoth, aren't they? Going to make love to the children. <laughs> hey there, the children. <laughs> No, they're What's gonna wrong have, with shit? They're going to have Al Gore's going to make Man Bear Mammoth, isn't he? Man Bear Mammoth. <laughs> Man Bear Pig was created by Al Gore, and that is a fact. Yeah. Or well, What was the one with broccoli for an arm? Uh, that was uh, Scuzzlebutt. Scuzzlebutt. No, a broccoli for a leg, weren't it? No, he had uh, Patrick Duffy for a leg. Oh, and... Okay. Uh, he had broccoli somewhere, didn't he? What, like the Zoomers do? No, not on his head. Uh, Scuzzlebutt. I'm going to have to look at Scuzzlebutt. There's broccoli on it. I'm sure broccoli was on him somewhere. Brock Reznor. Scuzzlebutt. I just love it when the cursor disappears from the box. Scuzzlebutt. Um, that'll be the last paranormal of the night. Dun, dun, dun. Paranormal case of Scuzzlebutt. Oh, it's holding a stick of broccoli. Scuzzlebutt is a basking, weaving monster who lives on top of a mountain in South Park. He has a oh, he has a piece of celery as an arm, and Patrick Duffy as a leg. He appears prominently in the season one episode of Volcano. Does he get shot by Jimbo and Ned? Uh, no, uh, Stan shoots him to finally prove that he can hunt. Oh, okay. And Jim Burnett are sad because um, Scuzzlebutt was friend. Why you shoot friend? Oh, yeah, Stan kills the Scuzzlebutt, yeah. Yeah, Stan. Stan. Oh, Scuzzlebutt's in <laughs> South Park <laughs> Rally. Did you know that a little bit? I've never played that game. Uh, Scuzzlebutt was also a boss in in an unreleased Game Boy Color South Park game. <laughs> mm. uh, Scuzzlebutt is in South Park Stick of Truth as well, Hubbard. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, because crap people are in that. When you're going through the uh, underground layer, you sort of hear crap. It's also in the intro to season two of South Park. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and Bigger, Longer, Uncut. He was in that as well, but he was dead. How can he be in Bigger, Longer, Uncut? I don't remember him in that. Uh, he was in a crowd scene by the look. Oh. Okay. Or did it make a Streisand appear in that as well? Uh, I don't know. The Mecha Strut. What about the Mecha um, Robert <laughs> Robert Smith? No, that, that was Moth Moff Robert Smith. Oh, is it Moth Robert Smith? Hmm. I haven't listened to it for a long time. Robert Smith, Robert Smith, Robert Smith, Robert Smith. No name was provided because the author stole the shell suit bit from this channel. <laughs> this is dumb. He knew he'd have to answer. He's, he's going back to the um, the crappy article I read out. Mm. Uh, Sped West sound, it says, it sounds like the chatter when I'm playing against an Asian cricket team. Cricket team. That must be the um, Venusian. Uh, right, so I think we're all done now, aren't we? Yeah, I mean, uh, remember, all the things we said in here were works of fiction, allegedly. any resemblances allegedly. to any persons allegedly dead or allegedly alive or allegedly pregnant. Or allegedly um, killed by the allegedly future King of England, allegedly. Allegedly, you know, that that's all just like a, a, a psychological thriller we're workshopping here. Oh, um, if anybody wants to watch Endurance, it's well worth watching. But make sure you got a bucket with you. Uh, there are vid there are videos of on YouTube of Endurance, and the first episode of Banzai is on there. Oh, Banzai is great! Yeah, no, 
If you haven't watched Banzai, you should watch it. Oh, um, who's, you know Big Clive, is that you, Robert? Yeah, he's the electrician. Yeah, so he's saying looks like the kind of place you'd expect Big Clive to live in. So he's talking about the science flying saucer, I think Jim Jim Cook is. Yeah, yeah, I get what you mean by that. Oh, Lady One Question and Mr. Shake Hands. They were the days when television was fun. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah. We're not allowed that anymore, are we? No. When uh, when Jeremy Beadle used to throw people's cars off the edge of a key into the water. That was fucked. <laughs> Do you remember that one? When he shoves that bloke's it, car out into the water, that's fucking hilarious. He though. did some things which were proper, like, horrific. How he didn't get stabbed to death or beaten by somebody with a large stick, I don't know. Mm. Anyway, good night, all. Stay spooky. Go.